shores of Lake Erie sits Cleveland's Municipal Stadium. Tonight it plays host to baseball's 52nd All-Star Game and the first test of baseball's post-strike relationship with the fans. In the first half of the season, there were some surprises. Foremost among them, Fernando Valenzuela. Nine wins, five shutouts, a minuscule ERA, and a starting berth in tonight's All-Star Game. No less sensational was Montreal's speedster Tim Raines. An incredible 50 stolen bases in his first 55 games. A little farther north in California, they were playing billy ball. And out in Oakland, Tony Armas was leading the power departments and leading high fives in both leagues. A little less successful in his efforts was Billy Martin. Managerially, he was fine, but his dirt throwing on the back of umpire Terry Cooney cost him a suspension. For surprises, there was one to be found on the south side of Chicago, a familiar face in an unfamiliar uniform. Carlton Fisk leading a charge of the White Sox in the American West. A surprise of a different sort was provided by the Royals and one George Brett. The Royals and Brett broke from the gate slowly, and though Brett managed to come around just before June 11th, the Royals remained mired at the bottom of the American West. For excitement, there was enough of that to go around from coast to coast. Record crowds poured into ballparks around the country, and they saw a number of outstanding individual performances, perhaps none finer than the pressure-packed performance of Dave Winfield. Responding to the pressure of being baseball's highest-paid player, he was enjoying his finest season yet and throwing caution to the wind. And then there was Ken Singleton dealing from both sides of the plate to lead an Orioles charge throughout the month of May. Singleton coming into this All-Star game, riding a batting average of 340. In Houston, excitement came off the surprisingly hot bat of one Art Howe. A journeyman much of his career, all Howe did this first season, was reel off the major's longest hitting streak, a 23-game mark that put him near the top of the batting averages in the National League. And then there was the law firm of Davis and Gossage. Whenever there was trouble against the Yankees, they came in and restored order. It was Davis who did it in long relief, Gossage in short relief. At strike time, he had 17 saves, an 0.56 ERA. For one-time mastery, it was tough to top the performance of rookie Charlie Lee. The Montreal Expos against the San Francisco Giants, he managed to throw a no-hitter. But he was gone one better by Cleveland's hometown favorite, Lem Barker. Pitching before the home folks here at Municipal Stadium against Toronto's Blue Jays, he faced only 27 batters. No runs, no hits, no errors, no walks. The Major League's first perfect game in 13 years. For those who like their numbers in baseball, there was enough of that in baseball's first season, too. From the left side of the mound, there was Steve Carlton, merely piling up his distinction as baseball's finest left-hander, now with 3,000 strikeouts and 250 career wins. From the right side, there was number 41 of the Cincinnati Reds, Tom Seaver, still terrific after all these years. Like Carlton, he was posting impressive career numbers, 3,000 Ks, 250 career wins. And how about this man? He just rolls on and on and on. Gaylord Perry now weaving his magic for the Atlanta Braves, closing in on 300 wins. He needs just four more. In the speed department, Seattle's Julio Cruz tied an American League record with 32 stolen bases. But no finer number was posted than that put up on the board by Pete Rose. He tied Stan Musial's National League career hit record at 3,630. That was on June 11th. On the 12th, the strike hit. We have accomplished nothing. Um, the strike is on. Unfortunately, the differences between the Players Association at the bargaining table and ourselves are very significant, and we have not been able to overcome them up to this point in time. The differences were significant enough to force baseball's first midsummer strike, a strike that closed the industry down for 50 days and forced cancellation of 706 games. But the first half is history. The second half begins tonight with the 52nd All-Star Game. NBC Sports presents Major League Baseball, an inside look at the 52nd All-Star Game. Brought to you by the new Polaroid Sun Cameras. You've never been so sure of an instant picture. And by Firestone, makers of 721. One tough tire to top. As evening descends on Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, perhaps a record crowd will be on hand to watch an all-star game that is being played under the most unusual of circumstances. We'll be back. 
Here at Cleveland's Municipal Stadium on the shores of Lake Erie, fans are piling in for the 52nd All-Star Game, an All-Star Game that promises to be as significant as any in baseball history. Good evening, I'm Bryant Gumbel. Welcome to Cleveland and the start of baseball's second season. A lot of folks have poo-pooed All-Star Games in the past, but this one has some questions to be answered. First and foremost, fan reaction. What will their reaction be to the strike? They'll have a chance to voice it during the player introductions. There's talk of whistles. We'll look for banners up here. Second question. What will be the level of play? The players figure to be rusty. There are those who say, so what? Last year they were in midsummer form, and the game still came up a stinker. That remains to be seen. Then there's the confrontation on the field. It's American versus National. Are the Nationals hot? They've won the last nine, 17 of the last 18, 22 of the last 24. And then there's the matter of the umpires. There was some talk that in a labor dispute of their own, they wouldn't be here to work this game. But this afternoon, they reached an agreement with American League President Lee McPhail. They will have either 97% of their total salary or 100% of their total salary for the remainder of the season. That to be decided by arbitration. But yes, they will work the remainder of this year. And as for the folks in Cleveland, well, there may be a record turnout tonight for the fourth time the city has hosted the game. They planned on having it July 14th, but as you know, the strike took care of that. Nonetheless, they are happy to be hosting this once again because this is a city on the rise and the sports teams are leading that rise. The Browns are a team the city of Cleveland wholeheartedly supports. They won the AFC Central last year before being knocked out of the playoffs by the world champion Oakland Raiders. And how about the Cavaliers? They've known hard times, but now under aggressive new ownership, free agency and excitement. Watch words of the future. The Cleveland Force, a major team in the major indoor soccer league. And of course, the Cleveland Indians, when last seen, a team full of young talent and high hopes. The city of Cleveland fell into bankruptcy just two short years ago, but now it's achieved a balanced budget. Mayor George Voinovich is one who is excited about the future of this city and the teams that are very much a part of it. Well, I think sports uh, are fundamental. Any, any first-class town has to have a good baseball and good football, at least have the teams. And I think when the teams are going well, I think it adds a little vigor and vim to the community, and I think it helps a lot of the other things that are going on in the community. Contrary to what some people say, I think those ball players are going to go out and play their hearts out and, and at that all-star game and really give the fans a, a great game because I think they know it's the first shot out of the box and they're going to do their thing uh, and hopefully uh, uh, gain the fans' confidence and get them back in the ballparks. Cleveland Mayor George Voinovich excited about this game, no less excited than the man standing next to me. He is Jim Fry, American League manager, in his spare time manager of the Royals. Jim, the Nationals have won nine straight. How much do you think about that? I think a lot about it. I've been thinking about it all year, and this week I've been reminded of it about a million times. I, I'm really getting tired of the National League people popping off about it, and I'm going to try, I don't, not in me, but our players are going to try to turn it around tonight. Will you play this like an exhibition, or will you play it to win it? Well, to some extent, it's an exhibition because we're going to use a lot of players. But uh, when we get down to the last couple innings, you can throw out the exhibition. You have caught a lot of heat in this town because it could have been a good public relations move to start their hometown favorite, Lem Barker. Instead, you're going with Jack Morris. Why? Well, first of all, I've never been a public relations director, so I don't know about that. I thought I did it honestly with statistics and records and consistency, and I think Jack Morris fit that. Okay, Jimmy, thank you very much. Thank you. Best wishes. One All-Star who is not here tonight is a man who started last year's All-Star game in Los Angeles. He is James Rodney Richard, and as all of you know, he was felled by a tragic stroke on July 30th, but he is still working his way back, as we learn in this report from Ron Franklin. Just over two months after his near-fatal stroke, JR made his first appearance again in the Astrodome, throwing out the first ball in the National League Championship Series. I have it. You ready? Yeah, ready. In the past nine months, he's worked as hard as any athlete you've ever seen to make it back. Most observers, even doctors, said the task was insurmountable. He tossed batting practice this week to his teammates. In fact, the decision was made to let him pitch an inning during an exhibition game on Friday against the Rangers. But manager Bill Verdon nixed that, saying it had nothing to do with JR's physical ability. He simply wanted to make sure he was completely ready. I think it went fine. And I'm not throwing as hard as I can. Oh, I know. I don't want you to do that yet, okay? After, after the paycheck. That's <laughs> So on this night, Richard was all smiles. Another step closer to coming back. Please, sir. His reward for the hard work, a okay. kiss from his daughter watching in the stands.
James Rodney Richard will not be making the Astros' next road trip, but he will throw again in 10 days, and doctors will reevaluate him. He still has hopes of pitching in the summer of 81. For some All-Stars, the hardest work still lies ahead. All-Stars 81 style there at center stage. We'll come back to Cleveland right after this. Only Old Spice stick deodorant gives you both 24-hour protection from odor plus that famous Old Spice scent. My son's been working overtime practicing his saves. Good thing my Old Spice stick works overtime, too. Old Spice stick, the deodorant that works overtime. Here at Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, the fans are piling in and the energy level is running high for the 52nd annual All-Star Game. There'll be a clash of American versus National on the field, and there's about 70,000 fans anticipated to watch 60 players go to work. How one group's reaction to the other will be viewed is very much the story of this All-Star Game. We'll answer that question and many more after this update from NBC News. This is NBC News Update, sponsored by Polaroid. Here is Jane Pauley. Good evening. NBC News has learned that Russian, Czechoslovakian, and East German troops have been placed on alert along the Polish border. Observers say it's more likely a pressure tactic than a signal of imminent invasion. Russia today called President Reagan's decision to build neutron warheads extremely dangerous and said it would build its own system. Transportation Secretary Drew Lewis said it will take up to a year and a half to rebuild the nation's air system, but he claimed flights are safer now than before traffic controllers went on strike. And baseball fans have only minutes to wait for the All-Star Game and the resumption of the 1981 season. I'm Jane Pauley in New York. More news later on this NBC station. Our pride is showing. How do I look? This fall, we've got the stars and we've got the stories. If it's drama you want... I'm exactly on time. We've got the best. Somebody's got to save the universe. From partners to pioneers, we've got it all. NBC. The strike is history. It's given way to a second season. And tonight, baseball's finest are back at center stage in the 50-second renewal of the All-Star Game. The last time our NBC cameras were trained on Cleveland, the wind chill temperature was minus 37 as Oakland defeated the Browns in an AFC playoff game. Tonight, it's over 100 degrees warmer, and the game's most glamorous boys of summer are set to go back to work. Baseball's Midsummer Classic has a rich tradition dating back to 1933 when Babe Ruth hit two homers in Chicago's Comiskey Park to lead the American League to the first All-Star victory. He helped establish an All-Star trend of American League superiority that lasted until 1960. Since then, the National League has won 22 of 24 in the last nine. Looking to prolong that National League streak tonight, a mixture of old and new stars. Mike Schmidt, Fernando Valenzuela, Tim Raines, and Pete Rose. It was Rose who tied Stan Musial's National League record for career hits the night before the player strike. Tonight, he'll be starting at his fifth different position in his 13th All-Star game. Then there's Mike Schmidt, the most valuable player in both the league championship and the World Series last year. Schmidt is tied for the league lead with 14 home runs and garnered more of the fans' All-Star votes than any National League player. Fernando Valenzuela, El Toro. He took the baseball world by storm this spring with nine wins and five shutouts. He leads both leagues with 103 strikeouts. Another rookie, no less sensational, has been Montreal's Tim Raines. He had an incredible 50 stolen bases in 55 games. His blazing speed, yet another formidable weapon tonight as the National League's best try to extend their all-star streak to 10 games. Looking to upset that trend, the American League, led by their own headliners. National League import, Dave Winfield. League MVP, George Brett. Veteran, Carlton Fisk. And Len Barker, Cleveland's hometown favorite. It was Barker who was perfection in April, retiring all 27 batters that he faced in a perfect game at Municipal Stadium. The first Major League perfect game in 13 years. The million dollar man, the Yankees Dave Winfield, he's responded to the pressure of his high salary with his best pro season yet. A stellar performer at batting in the field. George Brett. Last year, he made a serious run at hitting 400. He won a batting title and an MVP award while leading the Royals to the World Series. He's perhaps the finest pure hitter in the game today. Carlton Fisk, he's changed his socks from red to white and found a new home on Chicago's South Side, where he has been reborn as a player, leading his team into contention in the American League West. 
These are just eight of the stars on hand tonight as NBC Sports brings you the start of Major League Baseball's second season. Baseball is back. The big names are here in Cleveland for the 52nd All-Star Game. Sports presents the 1981 All-Star Game, live from Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. The 1981 All-Star Game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer, who invite you to test drive the EXP, America's new personal coupe. By the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Gillette, makers of Good News and Swivel. Gillette puts two great shaves at your disposal. And by Big A Auto Parts, we've got the part you need. When you need it, we've got it. You're looking down on Cleveland's Municipal Stadium and the second largest American flag in the world. We're all getting set for the 52nd All-Star Game and the start of baseball's second season. Good evening again, everyone. I'm Bryant Gumbel. This is the fourth time that Cleveland has hosted the All-Star Game. The first time in 1935, 68,891 fans poured in. That is still an All-Star record. It's a record that may be broken tonight, and that would be news, but news may be fashioned by the crowd in another way, and that's their reaction to the players. For more on that, let's go upstairs to Joe Garagiola and Tony Kubek. What do you think, Joseph? Okay, Brian. Well, the reaction is the story here. The All-Star Game has always been baseball's showcase. Since 1933, the American League best against the National League best. But tonight, this All-Star Game definitely has an added dimension because it comes after a long and a very bitter fight. How will the fans react? We don't know. We've heard a lot. We've read a lot. Even tonight, we've heard something. But We'll get an indication when he introduced the players how they will react. We'll have some idea with that. And then when the game starts, I think that will answer some more questions. If it's a good ball game, a lot of good plays, I think it's going to be like an instant mouthwash and the bad taste of the strike will be gone. But if it's a bad ball game, it could be a long, long season, split season or not. Tony, I'll tell you, I don't think this game tonight is just another all-star game. Joe, I think this game will be dated in baseball history as one that was almost canceled. In fact, some people still feel it should not have been played. Tonight, baseball takes its first step, I believe, to rekindle fan interest for the second half, to try and reestablish itself as our national pastime. And believe me, I think a lot of people we've talked to all over this continent are looking at baseball with a little bit of a cynical eye. So tonight, many baseball fans are putting this game on trial, and it starts right here at this All-Star game. Okay, the game is on trial, and right now we'll listen for some of the reaction because we're going to the public address announcer, Ned Welk, for the player introductions. Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to meet the 1981 All-Star squads. First, the National League. Bill Buckley. 
Buckner. From the Cincinnati Reds, pitcher Tom Seaver. Representing the Houston Astros, pitcher Nolan Ryan. And pitcher Bob Nepper. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, first baseman Steve Garvey. Outfielder Dusty Baker. Outfielder Pedro Guerrero. And pitcher Bert Putin. From the Montreal Expos, outfielder Tim Raines. From the New York Mets, outfielder Joel Youngblood. From the Philadelphia Phillies, second baseman Manny Trio. Pitcher Steve Carlton. And pitcher Dick Ruthven. Representing the Pittsburgh Pirates. Baseman Bill Medlock and outfielder Mike Easler. From the St. Louis Cardinals, pitcher Bruce Souter. From the San Diego Padres, shortstop Ozzie Smith. and catcher Terry Kennedy. From the San Francisco Giants, pitcher Vita Blue. And now, the manager of the National League All-Stars, managing his first All-Star game from the world champion Philadelphia Phillies, Dallas Green. The starting lineup for the National League. Leading off from the Philadelphia Phillies, he needs only one more hit to become the all-time National League career hit leader. First baseman, Pete Rose. Batting second from the Cincinnati Reds, he's leading the league in game-winning RBIs. Shortstop, Dave Concepcion. Hitting third from the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was the MVP of the 1979 All-Star Game. Right fielder, Dave Parker. Batting fourth from the Philadelphia Phillies, the most valuable player in both the National League and in the World Series last year, third baseman, Mike Schmidt. Hitting fifth from the Cincinnati Reds, he's leading the league in RBIs and tied for the lead in homers. Left fielder, George Foster. Hitting sixth from the Montreal Expos. He has 13 homers and a 325 average this season. Center fielder, Andre Dawson. Batting seventh from the Montreal Expos. He was the runner-up in the league MVP voting last season. Catcher Gary Carter. Hitting eighth from the Los Angeles Dodgers, the top vote getter in the 1980 All-Star election, second baseman Davey Lopes.
It didn't the take coaches. long. It's up. Cleveland manager Dave Garcia. reception, a standing ovation, the many frustrating years that man has spent all being rewarded here. Tony, baseball is back. Well, the reaction Texas of the American Leaguers is really something. <laughs> Others on the American League staff, from Cleveland, trainer Jim Warfield. Also from Cleveland, coaches Dennis Summers. In the bullpen, Dave Duncan. Tom McCraw. And from California, honorary coach Jimmy Reese. And now the players from the Baltimore Orioles, pitcher Scott McGregor. And first baseman Eddie Murray. From the Boston Red Sox, outfielder Dwight Evans. Shortstop Rick Burleson. Outfielder Fred Lynn. And pitcher Ken Porsche. From the Chicago White Sox, pitcher Brent Burns. Representing the Kansas City Royals, second baseman Frank White. From the Milwaukee Brewers, outfielder Gorman Thomas. Catcher Ted Simmons. And pitcher Raleigh Fingers. From the Minnesota Twins, pitcher Doug Corbett. From the New York Yankees, pitcher Ron Davis. Pitcher Rich Goose Gossage. From the Oakland A's, pitcher Mike Norris. And outfielder Tony Armas. From the Seattle Mariners, outfielder Tom Pashorek. Representing the Texas Rangers, outfielder L. Oliver. And third baseman Buddy Bell. Well, Buddy Bell gets a homecoming ovation here from these Cleveland fans, and so far the baseball fans have reacted the way you would expect. They've cheered at the right time when the hometowners come home, and they've booed when the enemy, namely the Yankees, have been introduced. Yes, sir, baseball is back. From the Toronto Blue Jays, pitcher Dave Steed.
pitcher Lynn Barker. Jimmy Fry really wrestled with that one as he told Brian Gumble of the pregame show. And now the manager of the American League All-Stars managing his first All-Star game from the American League champion Kansas City Royals, Jim Fry. <laughs> well, had Jim Fry started Barker, I think they would have been cheers, but he didn't, and he has to pay the price. The American League starting lineup. Leading off from the California Angels, the leading active hitter with a career batting average of 333, first baseman Rod Carew. Batting second from the New York Yankees, a four-time All-Star, making his second start, second baseman Willie Randolph. Batting third from the Kansas City Royals, the league's most valuable player in 1980 and the top vote hitter this year, third baseman George Brett. Batting cleanup from the New York Yankees, a five-time All-Star, but a member of the American League squad for the first time, center fielder Dave Winfield. Hitting fifth from the Baltimore Orioles, the second leading hitter in the league with a 339 average, left fielder Ken Singleton. Hitting sixth from the New York Yankees, named an all-star for the 11th time, right fielder Reggie Jackson. Seventh from the Chicago White Sox, elected a starter for the sixth time, catcher Carlton Fisk. <laughs> Hitting eighth from the New York Yankees, the other half of the New York Yankees all-star keystone combination, shortstop Bucky Dent. And the pitcher warming up in the bullpen from the Detroit Tigers, leading the league with nine victories, Jack Morris. And now let's meet the honorary captains. The National League captain won more games than any left-handed pitcher in the history of baseball, a total of 363 during his 21-year Major League career. He was a 20-game winner 13 times, including a 23-victory season at the age of 42. Hall of Famer Warren Spahn of the Braves. What a pitcher, Warren Spahn. Right out of the Spalding guide with his delivery, flawless, great pickup move, pickoff move. There wasn't anything he couldn't do, and that's why he's in the Hall of Fame. The American League captain pitched three no-hitters and a major league record 12 one-hitters. He led the league in strikeouts seven times, including 348 in 1946. Elected this to the Hall should of Fame just in 1962, break Tony. he finished his career with 266 victories, all of them for the Cleveland Indians. Bob Feller.
See, Spahn and Fenner will go to the coaching lines, won't they, during this game, what, the fifth inning? They'll get their shot at the first base coaching box. They talk about his fastball, but he had some kind of curveball. What memories that stirs up when you see that? Bob Feller, another Hall of Famer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you to please rise for the national anthems. First, the Canadian national anthem, which will be sung by the daughter of the late Elston Howard, a nine-time American League All-Star. Here is Miss Cheryl Howard. The national anthem will be sung by longtime Cleveland favorite Rocco Scotty. I'm Bob Gibson. My fastball isn't so fast anymore, but this is Primatine Miss, the fastest type of relief known for occasional bronchial asthma attacks. Restores free breathing as fast as 15 seconds. And Primatine tablets help prevent attacks for hours. 
In the lungs, primatine opens clogged tubes, relaxes bronchial spasms, restores free breathing. Get fast relief. Primatine miss. Also, Primatine tablets contain the asthma relievers doctors prescribe most. Primatine. Now you can get your copy of the official 1981 All-Star Program, the same one sold at the ballpark. Just send a check or money order for $4 to All-Star Program, Post Office Box 243, Norwood, New Jersey, 07648. Remember to make payable to All-Star Program. New York State residents must add appropriate sales tax. That's All-Star Program, Box 243, Norwood, New Jersey. Allow six weeks for delivery. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. The city of Cleveland, a city with a false start for an all-star game in July, asked to start it up again. People wondered what it would be like. They showed them. A baseball term says that anybody can catch a good hop. The city of Cleveland been catching bad hops, and they handle this one just flawlessly. We've got excitement. We've got fans. And now we have the ceremonial first pitch. Let's go to Ned Welk once again for that pitch. Your attention to the commissioner's box near the first base dugout. Earlier tonight, members of the United States Army Golden Knights parachute team from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, parachuted into the stadium, bringing the first ball with them. Catching the ceremonial first pitch and representing baseball fans everywhere will be 13-year-old Derek Williams of Cleveland, who was selected at random here at the stadium. And now the first ball will be thrown by the Vice President of the United States, George Bush. got his tickets, Derek Williams, to the Police Athletic League program. Thank he you, and Vice President, President Bush enjoy the game practice and a long time. Here in Cleveland. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the umpires for tonight's game. At home plate from the American League, Bill Heller. At first base from the National League, Ed Vargo. At second base, from the American League, Lou DeMuro. At third base, from the National League, Bob Engel. On the left field line, from the American League, Greg Kosk. On the right field there line... There you see the umpires the being introduced to the crowd here. Ladies and Bill gentlemen, Haller time, behind the plate the on the right-hand right side of your screen. Prohibit fans from Lou DeMuro to his left. Far right. What a tremendous thrill it must have been for Dave Garcia, the Cleveland manager, who I think Tony got the longest and the loudest ovation of any of them. He did, and we hope you fans watching on television enjoyed that marvelous opening or pregame opening to this as much as we did. Everybody was applauding as the fireworks went off, and it was just a marvelous display put on the city of Cleveland. Gabe Paul, the president of this ball club. Well, what do you think about the fans? You think it's like the spurned lover they kissed and made up? Kinda. They made up with the American Leaguers anyway. Well, that was obvious, except for Reggie. He got a few boos, but Reggie deserves to be here because the fans want him here. You can't ever ignore Reggie as the American League takes the field. The defense, Singleton, Kenny Singleton in left field. Dave Winfield in center, Reggie Jackson in right field. George Brett from Kansas City at third. Bucky Dent from the Yankees at short. Willie Randolph also from the Yankees at second base. Rod Carew at first base. Carlton Fisk of the White Sox. And the starting pitcher from the Detroit Tigers, Jack Morris. And Jimmy Fry said he started him. He said if he had wanted to start somebody on emotion, he would have started Barker in his hometown after the perfect game. But he said, I went on sheer stats. He's been the most consistent. 1-9, lost three. Throws hard, has a good curveball. And that'll be the test, I think, uh, if these pitchers, after the long layoff, almost two months of real competition, can get their breaking stuff over, the finesse pitches. And if they can, if the hitters can hit them. A 
just wonder if it'll be the spring training bromide that the pitchers are ahead of the hitters. We'll wait and see who's the first one to say that. We might add, while we got a chance here, that it rained here on Friday. They had a football game here last night between the Steelers and the Browns. But I want to tell you something, that Marshall Bossert, and that's a famous name among groundskeepers in baseball, the Bossert family, led by Emil Bossert, the father, what a job they have done getting this field in shape. You can hardly tell there was a football game here. The yard markers, the grass will slow the ball up. I don't think there'll be any ball shooting through that infield, but it is in great shape. The only trouble spot is in center field. Pete Rose will lead it off, and everybody thought that Pete Rose would be setting his first record by breaking Musial's record, but as he steps in the batter's box, it's a new record for Pete Rose. The fifth all-star position that he is starting at. And if uh, baseball is on trial, could they have a better character witness to lead it off than this guy, Pete Rose? Rose played second base, third base, left field, right field, and tonight, first base, it's his 15th all-star game. Here's the first pitch of the All-Star Game, 1981. Ball one. That shrill that you hear are the whistles. There was a campaign here. Uh, blow the whistle on the players and show your, your frustration, your anger. They were passed out. We had some sent to us. Was it just players or was it baseball? No, the whistle on baseball. Everybody. Can't very well whistle on the owners, though. They're not here. Well, this play, uh, this game will start erasing some of those bad memories. We're ready to see it before the game. Well, look at that. That man is unbelievable. I'll tell you, the longest he went without a hit, it took a strike to do it. Pete Rose, as you look at 1981 National League rankings, hits his first. He came into this All-Star game with a 14-game hitting streak before the strike. Pete Rose, with that crouch that has become so familiar looking over the right shoulder, he hits a good pitch. Sinker down low and away he went with it. How he can maintain the level of concentration and the durability he has is beyond me. Here is Dave Concepcion. Ball on. And Pete on a decoy of steel of second base had Bucky Dent, the very first pitch to Concepcion out of position. Dent was going to cover the bag. Didn't get a slow curveball. One ball, one strike. Davies spent a good part of the first half of the season as we look at Rose being held by Carew. Two future Hall of Famers right there in your picture, folks. Concepcion for a while was leading that National League in RBIs, hitting in the number three spot for John McNamara in Cincinnati. Foster has since passed. Him. Slow curveball. He chased it. Foul tip and got Carlton Fisk. One ball and two strikes. Concepcion was the player of the month for April in the National League. It just kind of nicks him. High curveball. I think you're going to see a lot of hitters off stride early in the second part of the season. They haven't been used to seeing live arms with good stuff. Change of speeds. Movement on the ball. Foul ball. Concepcion was hitting at 306 in 55 games. Second in the National League with 44 runs batted in. Foster led, was leading it 49. I guess you can say led because we're going to have that split season, which will be a bit confusing. Baseball will run out of asterisks. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. Pete Rose, the leadoff man at first. Got him. Might have been a hard slider, Joe. It's hard to tell from up here. Either a fastball, that sail away from Concepcion, but it had excellent movement on it. See the Jack Morris stats? He's been overlooked a little bit in the American League. Before this season, the prior two seasons before that, he'd won 33 ball games combined. 
Dave Parker. Dave Parker nearby Pittsburgh and they really let him have it. Bill Garner, Bill Madlock all took their booze very gracefully and Mike Eastler also a pirate but he was cheered because he's a hometowner. There's the strike. Parker was hitting at 286 in 34 games. And five home runs. And 25 runs batted in. One ball and one strike. Dave Parker. He's his own man. There's that earring that he wears. One of the guys, although the strike hurt his pocketbook, as it did almost all the players that may have helped that knee, which he had off-season surgery upon. He had a good cut at that one, but he still limped around that batter's box a bit. One ball, two strikes. I guess you'd have to say that man is one of the strongest in this game today, along with Foster, I guess Corman Thomas. Big, one of the strong men in the American League is not here, Jimmy Rice. But there are a lot of great players who are not here in this game. It's always difficult selecting them. One ball and two strikes. I've always said, I wish there weren't a roster because there are guys that just belong here, but they shouldn't be here at the expense of those who deserve it by the way they're playing. Carew, what a play he made. I think he just put the glove down and there it was. I will show you the quickness of a Rod Carew. It appeared like he would not stop. Remember, he's holding Rose out. And look how close he is to Dave Park, who absolutely mashes this ball, sinking, hooking away. Rodney waves at it. I don't know if it hit his glove or hit him up on the heel of the hand. He makes a super play to get one out on Parker. The ball's doubled all the way, Joe. I did, too. It hit him about three different places. Let's watch it on his isolate. Once, hit him in the nose and bounces away, and he gets it. Might add, you just saw some tremendous shots, and we want to tip our hat to our crew right now. Before they took their first shot, our crew had 14 working hours behind them because of the football game last night. They worked through the night, getting set up, and here they are manning the cameras to give you these great pictures. And already in the first inning, they've been tested, and as we expected, they passed. Didn't mean to swing. It's a foul ball, strike one. Mike Schmidt. Let all National League players in voting with a million thirty-seven thousand three hundred and seven. He's the only National League player to top the one million vote mark. Sixth All-Star game for Mike Schmidt. He has moved off the plate and is using that whole field ahead. That fastball was inside. So I was looking down at the National League bullpen just a moment ago. But Valenzuela is a scheduled starting pitcher, but Tom Seaver has been doing a lot of loosening up throughout this first inning. Hmm. I don't know if that means he's just getting ready to be the second pitcher in the ball game and Valenzuela's loose, but we'll find out when the National League takes the field. Stays high. Two balls and one strike. There you see Sieber. He's loose and ready, and if he's coming in after Valenzuela or down the line of this game, he's getting loose awfully early. Mike Ryan down there in the bullpen. He's with the Phillies as a coach might be Tony that they're taking this as like a starting assignment fouls it off and I mean by that that they need a certain amount of time to get ready and Seaver is trying to judge it because you just don't know how long an inning will last Mike Schmidt first in home runs second in runs tied for second game winning RBIs he may be the best athlete in this game all round. No score. Two outs. Pete Rose is on at second. Two balls and two strikes to count on Mike Schmidt. He struck him out a good fastball. And the National League is not scoring the top half of the first inning, although Rose got as far as second. We go into the bottom half of the first inning. There is no score. National League, nothing. American League, nothing. And two up. Carew, Randolph, and Brent.
Brody, beautiful shot. Municipal Stadium here in Cleveland. 1981 All-Star Game. National League defensively. George Foster is in left field, Cincinnati. Andre Dawson, Montreal in center field. Dave Parker, right of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mike Schmidt is at third base from the Phillies. Concepcion at short. Davey Lopes at second base of the Dodgers. Pete Rose out to first base. Fifth position in the All-Star Game, as Joe told you. Gary Carter of the Expos behind the plate. And Fernando Valenzuela on the mound from the Dodgers. And there he is. From the baseball standpoint, his pitching coach, Ron Paranowski, has plenty to say about him as he delivers to Carew outside ball one. He says that he can hit either corner with his fastball. He throws a screwball at two different speeds. And he can come in with a fine curveball. Rod Carew, two balls, no strikes. 305 with two home runs, 17 runs batted in. This 333 average last year went overlooked because of Brett's fantastic 390 here. Up the Trouble. middle. Tough play for Lopes. He can't make it. Carew is on. Joe, when you look at the makeup of the two starting teams, the American League in the starting lineup appears to have a little more speed just the starting lineup. Valenzuela, a little bit off balance, can't recover. Lopes may have slipped just a little bit when he didn't catch it cleanly on that hop. He was not going to get Carew anyway. It's a base set. The first four hitters in this lineup, as we look at the replay of Lopes trying to get the ball off the bat of Carew, the first four hitters can steal a base. Willie Randolph, ball one, Rod Carew. Outside. Now, if you're an American League hitter, they are hitting off Valenzuela, except from spring training off reputation. They've heard about his screwball, but that screwball is pretty much a finesse pitch, Joe. And the question is, can Valenzuela control it after like, two months off? So I don't know. He may go with more fastballs to these guys. Carew back easily. The official scores for tonight's game, they gave Carew a hit, as we told you. Ray Kelly Jr., the Camden Courier. Dave Nightingale of the Sporting News and Hank Kozlowski of the Lorraine Journal here in Cleveland. Carew is getting a good lead off Valenzuela. Big gap between first and second. There goes Carew. Here's the throw. They got a chance to get him. They got him. Gary Carter just fired a perfect strike. And that's a pretty good commercial right there as to the ability of Gary Carter. Carew appeared to have a pretty good jump, but Carter got a good fastball high. Carew may have been guessing the screwball was going to be thrown. A good tag by Lopes. Good call by Lou DeMuro. There's a good picture of a straight steal. Oh, Not beautiful. once did he look at the batter. Lopes in front of the bag, but they still got him. A base hit for Willie Randolph. Schmidt couldn't get it, neither could Concepcion. This is an excellent field to play on. It has always been in good shape. You usually get good bounces. It was covered during the rains. But remember, the National League is used to playing on more artificial surfaces. And a little bit of erratic hops may give them a little bit of trouble. That's a hit all the way, though. Schmidt covered ground like a shortstop in that third base spot. George Brett. Brett led all the players in balloting with a million one hundred and forty-four thousand. Randolph with one out is on at first base. There's no score. We're in the bottom half of the first inning. Ball one. Carter ready to throw. He likes to throw. He'll throw to any base. And Joe with Brett, as smart a hitter as he is, there is a big gap between Lopes at second and Rose at first base. And if he gets a pitch inside, Brett is going to try and use that hole and pull the ball through. Try and get a first to third going for the American League. Lopes is really cheating up the middle. Right back to Valenzuela. Nobody, Nobody covered. And Randolph is safe. Valenzuela very alertly held that ball. Good play, wasn't it? Brett was jammed. 
He did not get a good jump out of the box. There was a mix-up for this reason. Concepcion said, I'm taking the throw. And then he ball hit to you, Fernando. He was speaking to him in Spanish. But Concepcion then went for the ball. And Lopes did not get over to cover the balance. Well, very alertly got one out, Joe. Good play by the kid. He really kept his head. He kept looking for somebody at second base. And there's the first indication that some of the guys were not working out during the strike. That's a fooler, though, Joe, to be honest. Concepcion told Valenzuela, I will take the throw on the ball at back you. But if the ball gets by Valenzuela, Concepcion's got to go to get it. You Davey, think Lopes, Davey Lopes was going to back up the play at second and didn't recover to get the tag at second. But Valenzuela made a good play. He did. Dave Winfield. Man on second base, and you can see what he does with men in scoring position. A 393 hitter, and the man that he wants to drive in is right there, Willie Randolph. Screwball. I think that Carl Hubble, the man who I always associate the screwball with him, he's not sure whether he named it or his catcher, but he calls it a backward curve. His logic is very simple. If you can throw a curveball, why can't you throw a reverse curve? And that's what a screwball is. It used to be called the outshoot. There's another one. Mike Schmidt charges hard in time. So the first inning is now history. The American League did not score in the bottom half. We complete one inning to play. National League, nothing. American League, nothing. Here in Cleveland, Ohio. A beautiful night for baseball. We've had an exciting start. An aerial shot of Cleveland Stadium, Municipal Stadium here. It's a big ballpark. It looks like a sellout crowd. In left field, 320. In left center field, it's 357. Going out to 377, 387. Center field 400, right center 385, and right field 320. I think it's a very far, fair park. The hitter's got to hit the ball well in the alleys, get a home run, and the pitcher has a chance also. A lot of foul territory behind home plate, catch a foul ball. It's a fair ballpark. It is. And Tony, what a tremendous weekend for Cleveland with the football game last night, over 70,000. Looks like a sellout. Had a big fight here this afternoon. Foster doesn't get the first one, and a strike one. <laughs> what can you say? That's not angry puppy there, is it? No. <laughs> Bill Madlock, who they affectionately called Mad Dog, and his son was on earlier today. We call him Angry Puppy. Angry Puppy. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first one out today. He was out early, wasn't he? Yes, sir. What a proud day it must be for him to go to the All-Star game with Daddy, who's on the team. One ball and one strike. <laughs> Brett has it on the big hop. One out. I'll tell you, Joe, the first inning of play, the defense played the game like it's almost mid-season form because we had a heck of a play by Carew, heck of a play by Valenzuela. This play almost handcuffed Brett, but he throws Foster out. It was Bill Verdon from the Houston Astros coaching down at first base. Here is Andre Dawson. talk about your good ball players you better mention this fella's name it's his first all-star game he's a 1980 gold glove winner national league rookie of the year 1977 pulls it foul he had his pitch got out in front he's averaged 22 home runs over the last three seasons well, i think that's what makes uh, seeing an all-star game so interesting our statistician steve dance tonight thinks that dawson may be the best all-around player in the game right now with his speed throwing arm hitting ability for average and power you get a lot of arguments on that from people but that's dan's pick look at the statistics on him 598 slug. off the handle Carew knocks it down they'll not get him it's a base hit well i better wait for the official ruling but they give him an air be smart <laughs> it's a base hit Dawson is on it brings up Gary Carter 
A little bit late. Dawson slips on the way out. Randolph thought he might have a play. Morris got over in time to cover, but Willie couldn't recover. And Andre Dawson, a pretty good base stealer. Gary Carter, who I think is the top catcher in baseball, Tony. You look at everything. He's a good one. He is so tough. He's played an all-star game before where he played some outfield, in fact. One man out. No score, top of the second. Ball one. Carter was hitting at 245. Seven home runs, 30 runs batted in. 27 years old. He has 133 home runs in his career. That's more than any player's age. There goes the runner. They've got a, a chance. What They're a not jump. getting. Carlton Fish never had a chance. Dawson was so quick. His jump off Jack Morris. Look at the long left leg kick. Fish does not get a good pitch to throw on. A slider down and away. Boy, that Montreal ball club's exciting. There's another fellow in this game from the Expos. His name is Tim Raines who may have broken the Lou Brock record with the season canceled for about two months. He's going to have to wait for another year, but they can steal in that ball club. Dawson with the big lead at second base. Her ball catches it. Two balls in the strike. When you look at the hitters, Joe, have some of the deliveries, like off Morris especially, who's more of a power pitcher than Valenzuela, they're flinching a little bit, but maybe an indication the pitchers are a little bit ahead of them. Of course, these pitchers have only got to go an inning or two innings, so they can let it all out. Popped up. Late. Carew. Randolph. Carew says, I'll take it. Fisk wisely says, go ahead. That's always a sign of a smart catcher to holler for the infield. <laughs> First thing you learn at catching school, huh? That's right. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you convince that guy it's because of the glove. Here is Davey Lopes. We rode out to the ballpark with Davey, and Davey was very honest about it. He says he thought that there were others who should be here. I don't deserve it. He said, I don't deserve to be there. Neem Manny Trio, Ronnie Oster. This is, an her. Yeah, this is an outspoken guy. Flynn, he really did. He said, they're four or five. Maybe should start ahead of me. Ball one. You know, I always think, I remember the late, great Jack Benny once made a speech and he got an award and he said, I know I don't deserve this, but I have arthritis and I don't deserve that either. And that's <laughs> the way Lopes feels. Valenzuela is the scheduled hitter, but... Dallas Green, the manager, going along with his three. He may use a pitcher in inning in this All-Star game, unless the pitcher has a five or six pitch inning. So Joel Youngblood has come on deck. It's an interesting story in itself. Youngblood of the Mets being at this All-Star game. A good first half. This is three balls, no strikes. There Joel, you Youngblood. Joel Youngblood. A lot of controversial articles in New York papers. Youngblood has been outspoken said I'm making the all-star team and may not have even start in the outfield. Mookie Wilson out there and Alice Valentine and Lee Mazzilli. He takes it, draws the base on ball, so that'll bring up Joel Youngblood. He'll be the pinch hitter for Valenzuela. Base runners at first and second. Dawson is on at second. Lopes is on at first. Youngblood's story has been, I think, a little bit odd, Joe. And he's with Cincinnati. There were so many great players ahead of him. He had good minor league stats. He runs well, has a little bit of power. Sitting for average, as you see, at 359. He's never been able to fit in. And now with Alice Valentine going to the Mets and a youngster Mookie Wilson coming up and Mazzilli a favorite, they can't find a spot for him. up the first pitch Rod Carew taking charge in foul territory he makes the play so Youngblood pops to Carew in foul territory that ends it 
Now, Davy Lopes, you see walking off, had some problems, but the good hops are easy. Bad hops are tough. You saw one there. We're going to give a tribute to the second baseman who make bad hops look pretty easy. <laughs> Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, the moon over Cleveland, and it's teed up so high you have to say, star on the mound. You look down, blimp shot, Tom Seaver. Ken Singleton takes his strike. Seaver's seven and one, 2.07 earned run average, five complete games. Out of play, strike two. This is his 12th season in the All Star Club. He has struck out 15 in the 12 innings that he's worked. Reggie Jackson is the on deck batter, and there should be some kind of reaction to him, but Reggie's very loose. He's been over there visiting. There you see him, Bob Hope in the background there. There he goes, Commissioner, former Commissioner Chandler with the blue cap on. Look out. Hit deep to right center field. Shot 79 the other night. He took uh, the other day. He told me this is Carlton Fisk. Ball one. Married 56 years. Vibrant. He was visiting with everybody. You think he didn't? This guy right here didn't help revitalize that White Sox franchise quickly. Home run up in Boston. Beat his old team. He has really helped out. Fisk has that young White Sox pitching staff. One ball and one strike. One to nothing, the American League leading on a home run by Ken Singleton. Well tipped and got a little nick of Gary Carter. Singleton in April, what a year, what a month. Why, wow, I mean, he had a great year that month. Started to say 25 for 53 at 472. He was the player of the month. And he gives the American League a lead one to nothing with the home run. Seaver faces Fisk. One ball, two strikes, one out, nobody on. <laughs> this takes a lot of time getting in the batter's box, as you've seen. Also, he takes a lot of time calling pitches. When he's behind the plate, you usually see long ball games. He got a good pitch. Seaver nicked the outside corner. Fisk is out on strikes. So there are two way. It brings up Bucky Ben. <laughs> 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 
there's Bill Madlock, the Mad Dog, and his son, Angry Puppy. Bill Garner, member of the Pirates who also made the All-Star team. <laughs> Hit, Bucky Dent singles the right field. You know, several of the players in this All-Star game uh, was criticized as selects like Jackson and Lopes and Bucky Dent, but I think it's unfair to say to Bucky Dent, there may be more sensational shortstops in the American League, a Trammell or a, a Yount, Earlson, but he is as steady as they come, and you don't win as many pennants as the Yankees have without a guy like this. Here is Tom Peshorek from the Seattle Mariners. Having a good year, five home runs, 31 runs batted in, hitting 328. It's his first All-Star game. Seven game-winning RBIs, which puts him fourth in the American League. Hot smash, Schmidt can't come up with it. In the left field, Bucky Dent's heading for third. He'll make it. He just had a chance to see how fielders who are used to fielding an artificial surface when they get on dirt and grass, and Schmidt is a great fielding third baseman, but he let the ball play him. He's used to that ball getting to him much more quickly, Joe, off the turf. The charge is a, it's got to be an error. They gave him a hit. Well, that's a question. Mike looked like he may have gotten his feet tangled up, and then instead of backhanding the ball, he lets it get by him. But I really believe that on artificial surface, the ball getting to him more quickly, he's going to have it. He let the ball play him. Here's Rod Carew. He had an infield hit his first time up. There are two outs. Ball one. Rod Carew has four different stances. Big chaw to back in his mouth, and that serves a purpose. Hits it in front of the plate. Seaver says, I'll take it. It is in time. Carew dribbled one in front of the plate. Seaver gets him, ends the inning. We complete two innings of baseball here. The score, the American League won on a home run by Singleton. And there's the man who put the number on the scoreboard. Ken Singleton gets a tremendous ovation. End of two, one to nothing. Monday, actress Hope Lang visits live at 5. See you then. Well, Pete Rose needs 141 to catch Aaron, one to pass Musial, over 500 to catch Cobb. We asked him if he can still do it. No, because I stayed real sharp during the strike, and uh, sure, I'm going to miss the 50-some games, but who's to say I wouldn't have got a broken wrist the, the next game if we hadn't went on a strike? So if it's in the books for me to beat Ty Cobb's record, it's in the books. If it didn't, I won't beat it. Simple as that. I and tell you, size, could he? he makes <laughs> it very simple. Len Barker on the mound. Barker, who pitched that perfect game against Toronto on May 15th of 1981, delivers his first pitch. Listen. Starters and the Toronto hitters tell me that perfect game he pitches, breaking pitch absolutely exploded. Jody's a hard thrower aside from that. It's interesting when you talk to scouts. Scouts say he's very fast, but he's very straight. But his curveball is what really makes a believer out of you. Uh, here we go again. We've had an interference on the. Uh, Kissing Bandit. That's Morgana. Who has kissed George Brett, Frank Howard, a number of others. With all the security in this ballpark, many of it was Secret Service people, local police for the vice president. She somehow got through. Uh, Bob Hope enjoying it. <laughs> the commissioners are having a meeting and Bob Hope's <laughs> laughing. That tells you something. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Hope. <laughs> He's got about seven lines. He wants to get a microphone and deliver them. And I don't blame him. <laughs> Concepcion takes a strike. And 
Concepcion was out on strikes his first time up. Marker, oh, he has strike. a very deceptive delivery. He has that pause before he goes into his kick, then he pauses again at the top, and that knee kick, he really hides the ball well. And then he comes at you. He gets the ball to the plate in a hurry. Dave Duncan, the pitching coach for Peter Carlson, is breaking ball a slur. That was. One ball, two strikes. The fans will tell you what he's doing. can get their breaking stuff over the plate like Barker is right now, these hitters might have a long day. They're not ready for sharp breaking stuff yet. What's the reaction if he gets a strike on him? Watch this. to Barker. I wonder what the reaction was in that great strikeout streak that Carl Hubble had. What batters he had to face. 1934 All-Star Game, the American League had the power. The National League had the man on the left, Carl Hubble, the starting pitcher. He struck out five in a row, including Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox. Five in a row. 1934 All-Star Game belonged to Carl Hubble, and it's a game fans will never forget. How that must have built up. The new pitcher, 
is Bob Nepper. Five and one, one point one five earned run average, and we have a new second baseman. Bob Nepper, a power pitcher. Most of this staff, as we look now at Manny Trio, last year's most valuable player in the National League Championship Series. You might remember the relay throws he made in that Championship Series and the World Series. He has one of the quickest, strongest arms of almost any second baseman I've ever seen. He's one of those guys that when he gets the ground ball, he makes you run the whole distance. He's not a career saver. Some guys throw you out four feet from home plate, which may save maybe two, three miles in the course of a career. Trio makes you run it all the way out and then flips it with that quick flip of the wrist and it's there. That flashback in all-star games really bring back some memories. What a streak that was when we saw Ruth and Garrick and Fox and then Al Simmons, Joe Cronin. Joe Cronin, uh, former American League president in the Hall of Fame, might have been mad at you if you hadn't put him. He's probably down in Florida, isn't he? I didn't see him around up here. No, I didn't see him here. What a marvelous player he must have been. What a hitter. Mm. National League leaders in earned run. The man on the mound right now, Bob Nepper. He says that his success this year, he's regained his breaking stuff and he could get it over the plate whenever he wanted to before the strike. And he was concerned that he may lose that after the two-month layoff. Willie Randolph leads it off here in the bottom of the third inning. Randolph singled his first time up. Ball one. Randolph hitting 400 as an all-star. Bob Nepper, this is his first all-star game. One ball, one strike. You'd better throw, uh, throw strikes to Randolph. He led the league last year in walks. You're all greedy. I guess that means us, doesn't it? <laughs> Television, players, owners, you name it. We're all greedy. One ball, two strikes. <laughs> but the reception here has absolutely been marvelous, I think, for this All-Star game. Mm. Nobody out. Curveball misses. I got to say, Tony, that with the reaction it went here, it had to be the quickest makeup in romantic history. I know one game is not a test, but you gotta you gotta oh, go yeah. that baseball is back. Out on strikes. Here is George Brett. Brett tapped in front of the plate his first time up. I think surprisingly when we were in Kansas City about a week ago. George Brett told us that he never picked up a bat until the strike was over with. Played golf, rode some horses. Said it would take him seven days to ten days to be ready to hit. Well, his manager said he could hit buckshot with barbed wire. And if you can do that, you don't have to practice too much. Takes it outside. Two balls, no strikes. Two nothing pitch outside. Before the game, George Brett was honored by Mr. Sam Shell of Gillette as the top vote getter. Three balls and no strikes. And there you see it. The trophy they received. It's a strike. One to nothing is the score. A home run by Ken Singleton. The American League is out in front. And we hope you're enjoying this telecast. And a long time coming three balls one strike it's there are so many people that you'd like to mention that you think about but there are a couple special folks drew Olmeyer, we know you're watching susan bresnan usually is here from our nbc staff shad mason a good friend of Wee reese all in the hospital hope you're enjoying it as much as we are brett's not enjoying it that was a good curveball and out on strikes he goes that's two strikeouts for Bob Nepper. Well, Nepper said before the game he might, he was a little concerned of being able to throw his breaking ball. I mean, he goes three and two and really snaps one off on Brett. You can see George just freezes. Low and away, Carter holds the target and he just hit it. 
Tony, when they throw a curveball oh. that hard in that spot, all you can do is genuflex. Well, is it deja vu? We just finished with Hubble, and here's Nepper with two strikeouts, Randolph and Brett, Dave Winfield. Big guy almost went for it, took it high outside, and it ball was, one. It was some sight about three hours before the ball game. There's Jim Fry, the American League manager, when Dave Winfield's kits came in, about 1,000 strong in the left field bleachers. The Winfield Foundation paid for about 1,000 Cleveland area kids to come to this ballpark. And there must have been oh, more than a dozen, way more than a dozen players from both leagues go out to the left field bleachers to uh, chat with these kids. Dallas Green. Looks like lefty Steve Carlton looking at the lineup, seeing when he might go in, and probably a Secret Service man. If, Vice he, President if he's Bush not here. watching the game, he's a Secret Service man. They're all over the ballpark. Vice President Bush is here. Two balls and one strike. Winfield bounced out his first time up. 40 RBIs, on base percentage, 403. He is already following a lot of Charlie Lau's theories of hitting, moved off the plate, trying to use the entire field more. Average has gone up. He didn't get it. Two balls and one strike. I think the thing that has surprised most people who had not seen Winfield play is his base running ability and his defensive playing. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Three balls and two strikes. Winfield is one of those players who, if you look at sheer stats, batting average home runs over the year, you can get fooled because he has never had really impressive lifetime stats. But I'll tell you one thing. When you look at what you call them constants, the way you can go from first to third, steal a base, score from second, one of the greatest throwing arms in the game, capable of playing center field as he is tonight. The way he breaks up double plays, there's his boss. Boss George man. Steinbrenner and Mrs. Steinbrenner. Give an interview. Three balls, two strikes. He didn't get him. It didn't break. Winfield draws a base on balls. It brings up Ken Singleton, who will bat right-handed this time up. He hit the home run to give the American Leaguers the one-nothing lead. A steady ball player. Both his ankles are taped, Singleton, because he has the Achilles problems. With Winfield leading off first. Bouncing ball. Nepper, a nice play. He's going to get him, and he does. So, it completes the inning at the end of three complete innings here in Cleveland. The score, the American League, one. The National League, nothing. Schmidt, Foster, and Dawson coming up. Baseball's very special guest at this All-Star Game, the Vice President of the United States, Mr. George Bush, who captained a Yale team that made it to the World Series. Is it true you were a good field, no hit? I'm afraid so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, once in a while I hit one. What's your opinion of the caliber of play tonight? Just the rest great. of the show. Listen, I, well, there's one or two little things, but I think it's great they're back. There's some damn good ball out here tonight, and I think it's wonderful. I think I already know the answer to this question. Who are you pulling for? Well, I come from Houston. So I'm a National League fan. I confess to being surprised. Mr. Oh, Vice President, surprised. thanks for joining okay. us. Let's go back up to Joe and Tony. Okay, Brian. Good field, no hit. The Vice President, Mr. George Bush. Here's Mike Schmidt. Oh, he just blew that ball right by Schmidt. I mean, we don't have a gun up here, a radar gun of any kind. That's got to be 93, 4, maybe 5. Hey, we have oh. something. We're going to show you how they used to measure pitchers. Didn't have the radar gun, but listen to this reaction as Barker comes. One ball and one strike. That's what it looks like from way up there in the sky. Schmidt with that slightly closed stand, moved off the plate all oh, about a year and a half ago.
beautiful shot, wasn't it? You could see his stance and you could see his stride and how he put his body into motion with that shot. Barker missed two balls and one strike. Watch him go into motion. Rocky Dent. One out. Now there's a play that some shortstops might have made a little more sensational, but look how much ground he covers. He was playing Schmidt a little bit in the hole to pull, took five, six steps, gathered the ball with him with two hands. Some guys might have made that with one hand. I said, what a great play. And he made it made it play look easy. That really was not that easy. It's a good infield, Joel, because it's one of the deepest cut infields in the American League. And if you've got a good arm and good quickness, you can play deeper and get to more balls. You've just heard from the Will Rogers of baseball. Oh, yeah. I never he, saw a shortstop. I that's didn't right. Like. That's right. <laughs> Here's George Foster. <laughs> what a curveball that was. That backed him right out of there. Strike one. <laughs> George, George has got to have a meeting with himself after that curveball, and I don't blame him. This time it's Willie Randolph. And they're two away. Saw the bat off right in George Foster's hands. Got a fastball up and on the fist and jammed him. You might have noticed the difference in the American Leaguers also on that playing on dirt and grass, how much more Willie Randolph charged that ball then Schmidt did. In fact, that man, Willie Randolph, holds the assist record for an all-star game with six. Here is Andre Dawson. He had a base hit and stole a base in the second inning. One to nothing. We're in the fourth inning. The American League's out in front. A home run by Singleton. Good breaking ball tonight. That was a fastball that he ran under the fists of Dawson. Parker will not throw too many off-speed pitches. He'll show it to you once in a while, but he is hard curveball that his pitching coach Dave Duncan says starts breaking from his hand and never stops. <laughs> one ball, one strike, two outs, nobody on, one nothing American League lady. Fourth inning. Bucky Dent once again. He's got it. One, two, three, and Bucky Dent handles two of the three innings. You know, the shortstop territory is a lot of territory. They covered many different ways. Watch some of these great plays at shortstop. comes out as he blows the big bubble and Dwight Evans will be the pinch hitter for Reggie Jackson you talk about all-star voting and guys that belong here's a fella who did not finish in the top 16 in the votes ball one but what statistics he has for the year that's first in batting first in slugging first on base first in walk second 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 third fourth He's having a tremendous year. Well, he could be heading for an MVP season, although it's a shortened season, obviously. With the help of Walt Ridiak, who is a Charlie Loud disciple. Evans has really become a good hitter. He was a good hitter in the second half of last year. He had a bunch of home runs, drove in a bunch of runs, and Ralph Howe getting up there. 
So you're hitting one, two, three for me because you're on base percentage is good. He draws the base on ball, so Evans is on. And he's in the game as a base runner. Game via the pinch hitter, but the fans vote, and if there are certain fellas that the fans want to see, they put them on the ball club, and there are fans who have to pay the price and hope that they get picked by the manager. In this case, Evans was. But it's the fans' game. Joe Dallas Green, the National League manager, talked about using one pitcher in each inning, but he has nine on his staff, and there's always the threat of an extra inning game or an injury, so Nepper right now is going two innings. Here's Carlton Fisk. He struck out his first time up off the end of the bat, strike one. He was trying to hit that gap between Trio and Rose out to right field. Nepper, when he pulls the string on that sinking fastball, that, it almost looks like a screwball. The ball really tailed away from Fisk. And a good fielder is a good fielder, Tony. That ball went in the American League dugout, and Buddy Bell just reached over and got it barehanded. And boy, was it good to see his father, Gus Bell, a former major leaguer here. Old teammate of mine. There's Reggie Jackson, Rod Carew watching it. Tony Armas. Armas. Randolph. The Goose. The Goose. He's not eligible for this game. He had a little shoulder stiffness, so he's replaced by his teammate next to him, R.D. Ron Davis. Popped up. Short right field. Parker coming hard. He's there. Makes the play. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV, New York. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek here in Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, where there's one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. The American League is out in front, one to nothing. A home run by Ken Singleton. Garmin Thomas has come out in the on deck circle as Bucky Dent steps into the batter's box. It's a strike. Bucky single his first time up. There's Gorman Thomas. A pretty good ball player, Tony. Oh, man, he will claw at you and crawl through a wall to catch a ball. Good outfielder, good arm. Good hitter with men on base. Pull foul. Pass Don Zimmer. Coaching at third. There's the National League duckout. Warren Spahn. Tim Ray. Rains. Ozzy Smith. I tell you, I... Uh, Young blood. If I were managing a team, I'd like to have the feet and the legs of a Tim Raines on the bench for late in the ballgame, wouldn't you? Uh -huh. Pitch run and get in scoring position in a hurry. Pedro, Pedro Guerrero. Guerrero. <laughs> Two strikes to count on Bucky Dent. He tomahawks it down the line. It'll be extra bases. Evans is digging hard. He'll stop at third. It's a double for Bucky Dent. Nice play. Pete Rose backing it up. The ball got by. Trio Schmidt, and look where Rose came from. That does not look like that much of a play with what you just mentioned, Rose, but if Rose isn't there to back it up, that meant Carter would have had to leave home plate and get the play and might have allowed Evans to score. Show you how Rose is in the ball game. Evans tripped and fell around second base, but I don't know if he'd have scored anyway because Baker got the ball back in in a hurry. Rose is always around the ball as we look at the play. Baker plays it off the wall. Plays it very well in a strange ballpark and then hits his cutoff man, his relay man, Concepcion. Gorman Thomas hitting 429 with men in scoring position. This fella has hit more home runs in the last three seasons, 115, than any other player. And that, of course, includes Mike Schmidt, who has 114, and Jim Rice with 109. But all you hear about is his strikeouts. Infield now for the National League. About halfway for Thomas on the left side, in on the grass on the right side. One strike. Gorman Thomas. You know, a left-handed pitcher like Nepper pitching to a right-handed power hitter with one out and first base open with a left-handed crew up. Will that show you the kind of respect you have for Rodney? Makes a and difference. Nipper may not be ordered intentionally to walk Gorman, but he may be uh, he may be throwing him a lot of breaking stuff. He pops it up in the infield. Manny Trio says, I'll take it. He's battling. He's got it. So Thomas pops up. 
And there are two outs. Don Zimmer, the Texas Rangers manager, formerly of Boston, will show you Dwight Evans on that double to the left field corner by Bucky Dan. Watch after he hits the bag. There's Trio going to back up the relay man Concepcion. Evans falters right there. And look at Rose in the back. He is already sensing the play. As soon as Dent rounded first, he was going back up to play, which may have saved a run for the National League. Here is Rod Carew, time being called. Carew's got an interesting theory on why he puts such a big chaw tobacco in his mouth. I can't argue with it, but it is different. He sticks two, sticks a gum with it, takes it low, ball one. He says what it does, it pulls his skin tight so he can't squinch his eye. That means more of the eye on the ball if oh. you don't squinch. Are that's you going to get Carew. into the left hand, no. left cheek and right cheek no. chewing now? I'll no. tell you, they're very alert. Schmidt is playing very deep at third. And Carew can drop a punt down and beat it out. Takes a strike. One ball and one strike. He's hitting 700 in this ballpark this season. It's a good park for him. Every swing by this guy is a hitting clinic. Look at that concentration. He taps it foul. He's just watching Nepper all the way. And there's not a squinch in the car load as he looks at him. It might be unusual for Rod Carew to bunt. There are two outs. The count two and one. But he's got a left-handed pitcher, a tough left-hander. And Schmidt is daring him to drop the ball down. And Rodney is absolutely magnificent at controlling the ball down that third baseline. Look where Schmidt's playing. I think I dare you bunt. You want to score the run with a bunt with two outs? Go ahead. It's one ball and two strikes. They're changing it, Tony. That's what uh, Bill Haller is doing. The scoreboard has two and one. One and two. One ball and two strikes. Haller has just called time. There he is indicating it again. Good fastball. He missed it. They ask and they say no. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the fourth inning, one nothing. American League leading. An appeal or request of an appeal by Carter was to the third base umpire Bob Engel of the National League. There's Dent. He's at second after a double. Evans is at third. Good he got him. Nepper, a big strikeout. That's his third. His third strikeout. That ends the inning. It's one to nothing. The American League out in front. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Well, the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise is home base in Pompano Beach, Florida. But tonight, Captain Mike Fitzpatrick is giving us those great shots like that one. As he hovers over the All-Star game here in Cleveland and it looks like a capacity crowd. So far, it's one to nothing, the American League after four. The game originally scheduled. There is Dwight Evans, who stays in the ball game. He walked pinch hitting. New pitcher for the American League, Ken Forsch, getting the signal straight with Carlton Fisk. You know that guy. You batted against him. I did, too. <laughs> and what he's doing, Warren Spahn, is taking some bench jockeying, indicating, don't be getting on me about my nose as he motioned with his elbow. Now he's a pitching a, coach, isn't he, for the Angels in the, the minor leagues? Angels leaves? farm system. That's right. Warren Spahn. So Ken Forsh against yeah. Gary Carter. Forsh allowed two earned runs in his last 27 innings pitch. Well hit. Deep to left field. Singleton going back. Just stayed up and in for Carter, didn't it? Fastball is inside the Manny Trio. Gary Carter at age 27, we told you, has 133 home runs in his career, more than any player his age in the major leagues. And he has just tied it up with a home run here. Trio fouls it off. Well, Gary Carter did not let Ken Force even get his feet on the ground as we look at it. 
think it was a slider, high and tight. Carlton just wanted to reach out there and grab his batter, grab the ball before he could swing. It just stayed right there. Tony, that looked like one of those pitchers as he catches you, holler, oh no, as uh -huh. soon as it's released. Foul ball. This is the first appearance for Porsche in Municipal Stadium. One ball and two strikes to count. National League bench, Concepcion is Gary Carter behind him, putting on the tools. And Petey Rose, there you see him. Right field, Evans is there. And we're going to have a pinch hitter come on for the pitcher, Nepper. Terry Kennedy has come out of the National League dugout. You think Pops is proud? Right now, Bob, formerly the Cubs general manager, this is a big guy. He's got some power. He has a great throwing arm. He's a chance to be an excellent player, Joe. He's got a lot of tools. I saw a scouting report by one scout that I really respect, and he simply put on his report, he can play. He has 60 base hits in 50 games this season. This is his first All-Star game. Hits the first pitch, and Willie Randolph is there, and he's going to be an easy out this time. Gary Carter's home run is tied it up here in the fifth. Randolph's fourth assist. If he stays in this ball game. We told you he holds the assist record for an All-Star game for second base with six. Here is Pete Rose. Rose, who set another record tonight by playing fifth position in the All-Star game. You heard him say that he's he thinks he can still get Ty Cobb's record. Well, he needs 561. It means he will have to be, what, about 43 years old by the time he gets it? Ball one to Pete Rose. He says the only thing he has to prove now that he's not too old. Pete Rose, an amazing, amazing athlete. Low. Little uh, there's Petey. young Petey watching his father. I think Jim Murray had a great line on him. Jim Murray writes for the Los Angeles Times. He says Pete's not going to die of old age. He's going to die of prolonged boyhood. He's got such enthusiasm with everything he does. He comes running out of the dugout. He had his agent check during the strike to see if he could go from playing Japan just so he could play. <laughs> Worked out about three hours a day playing tennis. Hitting in the batting cage. Willie Randolph once again. And that ends the inning, but Gary Carter's home run ties it up. We go into the bottom half of the fifth inning, and it's 1-1. Gary Carter hit a home run. But if I said to you 1946 All-Star game, you would think of maybe a home run, but I'm sure you think of an EFAS pitch by Rip Sewell. Ted Williams liked it. Watch this. Boston, Ted Williams against Rip Sewell, and there it is, the Ephraim pitch. Williams looks at the first one, here comes another one, and there it goes. The Ephraim pitch ends up in the bullpen, and what a hitting exhibition the American League put on that day, including two home runs by Ted Williams. The final score, American League 12, National League nothing. Tony Kubek, Joe Garziola. Cleveland's Municipal Stadium for the All-Star Game. Beautiful shot from the blimp. This game was a sellout July 14th originally. Some seats are returned because of a lot of the problems, but we've got a near sellout here tonight. Steve Garvey has gone to first base to replace Pete Rose. A new pitcher has come in. Bert Hooten of the Dodgers. Hooten will bat in Rose's number one spot. Bob Feller is coaching at uh, first base, and Bob Feller, he could fire that ball. That's all I can say about him, simply enough. They have always tried to measure the speed of the pitchers. Here is Bob Feller loosening up. Here's a target he has to throw to. Today we have the radar gun. In that day, they had a motorcycle rider. See him on the right? He was going over 90 miles an hour. Who wins the race? The ball wins it. The tough thing about that was to get a volunteer to ride that motorcycle. That was tough. 
Here is Willie Randolph. Hits the first pitch, a big hopper to Mike Schmidt. Garvey takes it. There's one out. <laughs> what a way to measure a fastball. There's Bob Feller coaching at first base. See, wonder, he was involved in that, what was it, 48 World Series with that pickoff play? You know what year that was? Where well, it was a non-pickoff play at second base. They ended up losing the ball game one to nothing. Bill Macy. Uh-huh. It was Feller to Boudreaux. George Brett. It's a high ball one. Bottom of the fifth inning. National League won a home run by Gary Carter. American League won a home run by Ken Singleton. He doesn't get it. Looks like the knuckle curve. Bert Hooten has come up with a pretty good straight change of pace to go with that fastball. He's not overpowering, but he's got that tricky knuckle curve that really goes down. With that straight change he's got now, he's really something. There's his strike. One ball, two strikes, one out. Let's watch so George many more players now, George, moving farther away from the plate, I think, and using the whole field to hit, and even power hitters. Well, Carew's explanation is he can see the ball longer. Brett, the same way. When he first came up, they had a breaking from being a pull hitter who modeled himself after Yastrzemski holding the bat high. He got him to hold that bat down. He's to success. He really relaxes and waits. He doesn't get it. It's a strikeout. So that brings up Dave Winfield. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Winfield is 0 for 1. He bounced out and he walked. We've seen a good show to this point. American League leading. The National League with six hits to three. The score tied at one. As ball misses, ball one. Most people seem to think this was going to be a high scoring game. Did you? No, I didn't. I kept reading about 10 9 games, 8 7s. You've got to believe the pitchers have got the edge. Well hit, center field, but Dawson's right there waiting for it. Plays it perfectly. Hooten has a perfect inning. Three up, three down. We complete five innings of baseball here. We're all tied up. National League won, the American League won. And two up, it's Concepcion, Parker, and Schmidt. Joined now by Commissioner Bowie Kuhn. Commissioner, the playoff format uh, as it stands now, you're going to have some changes for us tomorrow? Is that the rumor? We'll have an announcement tomorrow on the only limited to the situation where you get a uh, same club winning both halves. And we'll announce uh, that there'll be a home field advantage for the two-time winner as against the wild card club. Is the change because of the criticism that the format had attracted? No, or just no. a rethinking oh, of it? No, no. It's not a rethinking at all. When we announced that we would go to the split season, we said that the league presidents and the commissioner would resolve the question of what home field advantage should be given. I met with the league presidents today. We made our mind what it's going to be. We'll announce to our clubs tomorrow morning, announce to the public tomorrow afternoon. You've got to be pleased with the crowd. I love the crowd. I love the game. I love all about it. Good enough. Let's go back upstairs. Joe? Okay, Brian. Thank you, Commissioner. As we look at Mike Norris, the new pitcher for the American League from Billy Martin's Oakland A's. Eight and three is his record. And at third base, we've got a new one. Buddy Bell of the Texas Rangers, but he broke in here at Cleveland, so he's a big favorite. A lot of controversy when he moved on. Bell would bat ninth. Norris will bat in the number three spot as Brett leaves the game. Here's Dave Concepcion. He is 0 for 2. Struck out and bounced out. 1-1's one the score. Strike one. Joe, there's been a lot of media criticism and it appears like a lot of loopholes in the proposed split season. One's batted in. You can see Concepcion, number two, behind his teammate, George Foster. In fact, I'd heard a rumor that I... Buddy Bell gets it. One out. And it is only a rumor, but it occurred around the batting cage. And there's really, in my mind, no validity at this point that there's a chance, as we look at the replay from our left center field camera, the batter from Concepcion to Bell. The rumor was that because the owners now, after setting up the split season schedule, thought 
a little more and there were some inequities built in and the chance for improprieties down at the other end of the schedule that they might call an emergency meeting within 24 hours of today to change but that is strictly a rumor at this point but there are some uh, there could be some problems with the split schedule season could be her ball is high and it's ball one Top half of the sixth inning, all tied in one apiece. Didn't get it. One ball, one strike. Reggie Jackson, Tom Pishori, the American League bench. A good crowd on hand. There you see him. Larson, with that good screwball. There it was. Off the end of the bat, it's going to be tough, but it rolls foul. Norris was second in the Cy Young voting last year to Steve Stone. He has a very unique delivery, I think, Tony, and that he, he's on the third base side of that rubber. He kind of stops right in the middle of his motion, and then almost, he gives you the feeling he's jumping at you. You remember when uh, Alvin Dock managed the A's, and he brought Mike Norris up as a very young kid in his late teens? He just overpowered hitters and really, really helped that Oakland A's ball come. Then he hurt his arm. Many people thought he was finished. He went to the minors, gained control. His fastball came back, and he learned that screwball. He's got a count of one ball and two strikes. National League bench. He went around. Schmidt is over two so far. Norris tried to sneak a fastball by him. He turned it around, didn't he? Parker <laughs> certainly did. Line drive off the glove of Bell. Base hit. Schmidt really tomahawked it. He's got himself a two base hit. High breaking ball. He went after it. Almost comes up with a super play. He, I think he's the best at his position at third base, Buddy Bell. He's played well off the line for Schmidt and almost caught it. Dave Garcia, his former manager, said he's the best in the world. Here is Baker. First time at bat in this game. First All-Star game outside, ball one. So you've got to wonder if you look at the makeup of the two pitching staffs, the National League appears to have more power pitchers on their staff than the American League. And those finesse pitchers, which the American League has more of, maybe a little more difficult to control. What a play. Buddy Bell, oh boy. what a play. He's got Schmidt. Oh. Beautiful play by Buddy Bell. There was no playing a hop on this one. From our left center field camera, Harry Coyle gets to the shot. In between hop, he was going to look Schmidt back. Schmidt made a little bit of a base running error. Violated the Cardinals center ball to the left. You don't go over. Bell makes a super play. He had no chance at all. Boy, I'll tell you, for you young fellas who want to play the infield, that's the way you do it. You get in front of that ball. Had he not come up with that ball, he still would have kept it in the infield. But he came up with it. He looked the man back, and he trapped him. He couldn't get out from the front of that oh, thing. Oh, yes, a rocket. That was a rocket. 
Hey, you've seen those guys oh, give that all lay. That was a beautiful play. That was a great play. You get some of those guys with a long-term contract, and they'll flag it. Hi, how are you? See you on your way back. Beautiful play. Baker's on it first. This is Dawson. Didn't get it. One ball, one strike. The play that Val made, you had a chance to see why he's won two consecutive gold gloves in the American League. And there was a very quick cameraman trying to get that shot. Two balls and a strike with two outs. National League two, American League one, all home runs. Parker has just broken a 1-1 tie, which was set up. A home run by Singleton gave the American League the lead in the second. Carter with a home run tied it up in the fifth, and, Car and Parker here in the sixth has just broken a tie. Two balls and two strikes. Andre Dawson. Andre wants to look at the ball. You probably have heard that some people have accused Billy Martin's staff of doctoring a baseball, and that baby went down. Good movement on that ball. Good sinker. He's really <laughs> checking it. Oh, Andre wouldn't see it. Bill Heller checked it out. He said it was dry. But any time a staff gets as successful as this staff has, Billy Martin and Art Fowler, the pitching coach, are going to accuse you of something. That foul. <laughs> a fan came with a net. The biggest thrill in baseball, a foul ball, and he just reached down with that net. He could catch Moby Dick with that net. <laughs> He got himself a foul ball. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. All right. Two balls and two strikes. Yes, sir. Baseball is back. The fans are ready. Out on strikes with the runner breaking. Parker gives the lead to the National League two to one. But Parker in 1979, remember, gave us some thrills with some throws. Remember the Ken Dome in Seattle? The Kingdom in Seattle, and Dave Parker puts his arm on display. A tremendous throw to third base. It's not even close. And then Parker came back later on this base hit. He uncorks his throw all the way to home plate on the fly, but watch the tag by Carter. He's got it. The call is made. Another thrill from the All-Star Game 1979 version. Yola with Tony Kubek here in Cleveland where Mike Eisler has just gone in to play right field for the National League and Ozzie Smith has gone in to play for the National League at shortstop. Two balls and no strikes. Singleton had a big home run. Gave the American League the lead in the second inning. He gets his second base hit. Sends it right back up the middle. to Ken Singleton tried to sink a ball down got it about belt high Kenny was really going for the pump on that one he was trying to let it all out he's a just a good ball player Singleton a solid hitter one of the better kept secrets in baseball here's his swing as he sends it right back up the middle well there have not been too many three four switch hitters like Singleton Murray that the Orioles had who have produced as much as those two guys hit to right field for Evans. Eastler up with it. Singleton tops at second. The American League's got something going. Just had a chance to see the new Dewey Evans. He is a much smarter hitter. He was going the opposite way so he wouldn't hit into a double play. Shooting for the gap. He's no longer trying to pull everything. So the American League with base runners at first and second. Nobody out. Carlton Fisk the batter. Fisk struck out in the second and flying to right in the fourth. And we thank the great folks here at Cleveland for that special welcome. We've enjoyed our stay here. They've had all kinds of activity. This town is alive. Good football team, good basketball, good soccer, good baseball. A lot of activity and what an all-star game they're being treated to. Schmidt and Garvey at the corners for the National League. Ooh. Hard 
playing in close in the event that fist bunts. Dent is the next hitter, but there are pinch hitters ready. A guy like Fred Lynn is loosening up right now. He's fist, fist drops one down. And remember, these hitters are not used to getting strange signals from the various coaches. Don Zimmer, the manager of Texas, the coach down at third base, he'll be flashing the signs to Fisk. And Singleton at second, Evans at first. Fisk has backed out a couple of times, which was an indication he wasn't sure of it. Hitting. Punt it. Punt it. Punt it foul. And a strike one. Fans don't like it. All-star game. They're giving a little second guess by their booze to Jimmy Fry, the manager. They want Fisk to hit away, I think, which he might do right now with one strike. Well, Fry said that he was going in the late innings. He was just going to play to win this thing. They haven't won since 1971 when Reggie Jackson hit that tremendous and memorable home run off Doc Ellis in Detroit. National League has won 17 of the last 18 All-Star games. They have really dominated. One strike pitch. One ball, one strike to count. Happy Hood. Singleton at second. Evans is on at first. Dave Garcia, the Cleveland manager, you see coaching at first. Schmidt is still in at third. It's a strike. Short enough as if the bunt took it, but it caught the corner. There's Mike Schmidt. He will now move back up. Okay, that's a pretty good left side of the infield right now where Schmidt, as agile as he is, and I really believe the man playing shortstop right now center upper part of your picture Ozzy Smith is the best defensive shortstop in all of baseball he is amazing never got much credit there's some good ones Boa I think Boa should be here the while he's done one two pitch looper right field Easter can't get it drops for a base hit and they're loaded the bases are loaded five hits and no errors the American League one run nine hits and no errors but the American League has a merry-go-round going Joe I think it's always a thrill to come out and see pre-game batting practice any ball game but especially at the All-Star game where all the sluggers in this game like the Winfield and the Fosters and the Parkers and the Jacks put on the show and I watched Lynn and he's obviously been lifting weights there's Dallas Green he's gonna leave Hooten in at this point but Lynn kept up with all these guys. He was hitting the ball out of sight in batting practice. He looks strong, Tony. The base is loaded. Bottom of the sixth inning. American League trailing by a run. No one out. Pass league defense playing for the double play with a one-run lead. Bouncing ball. Visit with Hoot. 
As you know, if that ball is in that strike zone, Bell's going to go to work. And we've got an on deck pinch hitter coming up. That's how the bases look when they're loaded from the sky. Control problems. Here are your American League RBI leaders with Buddy Bell sitting right on top. Strike. At third base, it's Evans. Second base, it's Fisk. First base, it's Lynn. Three and one to count. Nobody out. Score tied. Three and two now. Took something off, looked like this knuckle curveball. What a spot to throw that three and one and give him that heartbreaking ball. It's a pretty good pitch. You cannot be looking for him in that situation. Off his foot, it's a foul ball. Foul ball. So the count remains full. Four singles in a row, and it's all tied up at two apiece. And I've just been handed an amazing statistic by our wizard here, Mr. Steve Dans. He says there's never been a grand slam home run in an all-star game. And you saw with that sign what the fans are saying. Center for Rod Carew. You talk about your durable player. Talk about strong. He can hit the ball out of any park. He hits the opposite field a lot, left and right hand. Takes a curveball for strike one. He was ill early in the year, so his stats really suffered. He had a, I think it was a strange virus. Came back pretty quickly. Before that, Tony, he had played in 638 of the 643 games that's come to the big leagues. Ozzie Smith running the base runner, Fisk back to second. Murray has averaged 28 home runs and 99 plus RBIs per year in his first four seasons as an Oriole. One strike pitch now. Hot smash, Garvey has it. To Ozzie yeah. Smith, low throw, nice play. Oh, what a play that magician made a shortstop. Tony just got through telling you about being the best, and there's why. Garvey threw a sinker, about a 30-footer, but Smith really made a good play. He made a great play to stop the ball, but he had the composure to keep his foot on the bag and almost complete a double play. It was a very close play at first base. Garvey throws a sinker to Ozzie Smith. What a great stop. He kept the foot on the bag, the relay, very close at first base. Here's Fred Lynn, who almost gets hit by the shot off the bat of Eddie Murray. That may have shielded the vision of Steve Garvey at first base. What a great play by Ozzie Smith. And look Smith. at that roll oh, by man. Lynn. It was really a football block that he threw at uh, Ozzie Smith on one play that Ozzie Smith really didn't have anything to do with as far as starting it. He got kind of busy. Watch Lynn go out to try to get him. And Smith does a little ballet dance, but page seven of the Fred Astaire book, and he's out of there. You know, I think that play right there, along with some of the defensive plays, uh, will show that these players are really out to give the fans a good show. 
and to prove they have stayed in condition while the strike was going on. Simmons now the hitter. So there are two men out. American League leading three to two. Base hit right field. Fisk will score four to two American League. Murray will try for third, but now he's... Oh, he held up. Ozzie Smith was going to try to help the throw, and luckily that Murray held up. That was good base running, Tony. It really was, and a little communication is probably between Smith and Trio. Smith was taking uh, an offline throw. He's going to relay the throw to Schmidt at third base. Murray did that all on his own. He was not looking for a coach. You can see Ozzie Smith was going to third. He saw the runner Murray go out of his vision, thought he was continuing on. Big base hit by Simmons. Now Dallas Green is going to pop out. And we're going to have a pinch runner at first base for Simmons. Randolph went out of the ball game as we look at Ozzie Smith again. Green's going to visit with Hoot. May make a pitching change, and I would say he is the way he's just taking that ball. There goes Happy Hoot. So we've got a break in the action here as the American League is taking the lead here. It's 4-2 at the bottom of the sixth. We'll be right back with more action after these messages. White to replace Simmons who pinch it for Randolph so White will stay in the game at second base a new pitcher for the National League Dick Ruthven of the Phillies and Jimmy Fry is going to make a move right now Joe he is Al Oliver who was hitting 388 19 for 49 with men in scoring position and he's got one on at second base and Eddie Murray four to two is the score we're in the bottom of the 60 American League all singles there's the strike it started with Singleton. He singled the center. Evans singled the right. Fisk had a single. Lynn an infield hit. A sacrifice fly by Bell. Murray hit into a force out. A single by Simmons. And here we are with Oliver up there. Two men out. It's popped up. Ozzy Smith going out hard. Tough play. Dusty oh. Baker makes the play. Oh, what a play he made. great plays in this all-star game. Dusty Baker was playing Al Oliver very deep in left center field because Oliver has power in that direction. Smith sees he can't get it. Dawson over and a dive by Dusty and he's got it. What a play. What a run. What a play that was. Look at this. Tony, he was looking for collision. A soft turf out there too. Joe and Baker just kept on coming and waved everybody off. The Super play. The reaction you hear in the background, Bo Diaz is going in to catch. So it's 4-2 American League. At the end of six, we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Dusty Baker with that shoestring catch. Remember the first time you heard those words? Some make it look hard, some make it look easy. Baker's catch and he just made a few minutes ago. Some make it look hard, some make it look easy, but they all make the play to save the National League two runs. We've got all kinds of changes. They have not been able to get him up to the press box yet as Lee Elia is just now finishing with Bill Haller behind the plate. We've got a new pitcher, Ron Davis. We've got a new shortstop in uh, Burleson. Right now, there's no left fielder. We're going to have a new left fielder. Tony Armas is going somewhere. I think the confusion was, Joe, that Lynn was probably going to stay in the game, but I don't know if something happened to him because Winfield started to move to left field and Lynn was going to go to center, but now Winfield stays in center and Tony Armas goes to left. So, so it's Armas to left, Burleson at short. And Ron Davis, the pitcher, and Bo Diaz is the catcher. There's Burleson. We'll give you where they're batting. Jim Fry has just gone over with uh, Bill Haller to make sure. I think the confusion might have been, in fact, even in Winfield's mind, he started to move to left field expecting Lynn to go to center, and Lynn didn't come out. 
Miley Armistead and Winfield State in center. But there's Ron Davis, who, after Gossage had some shoulder tightness, was scratched, and Davis took his place. He faces Gary Carter. First pitch straight away center field. Winfield going back, back, near the wall, back, leaps, can't get it. There's no indication now it's a home run, indicated by the second base umpire, Lou DeMuro. What a try by Dave Winfield, but Gary Carter has his second home run of the night, and it's a 4-3 ball game. Both times, Carter has jumped on the first pitch. That ball may have landed right on the top of the fence and then bounced out. Winfield almost had it. Here's Dave Winfield in center field. He looks for the warning track. He's now going to try and scale the wall just out of the reach of his glove off the top of the fence. Carter, two first pitch home runs as it just clears the fence. Trio hits the first pitch, but Evans is there, makes the play, so there's one out. That home run by Carter puts him in the record book. Most home runs in the game to Archie Vaughn of the National League in 1941, Ted Williams in 46, Al Rosen in 1954, and Willie McCovey in 1969. You see a chance to see Winfield's speed and his agility and a home run that he just missed getting as he tries to scale the wall. Super efforts in this All-Star game, Joe, on both sides. It's been outstanding play. Yes, sir. Here is Garvey. Well, we showed you Ted Williams hitting that Ephus pitch for a home run in 46, which was one of the two home runs he hit to put him in a record book. And Carter is just going into the record books with that home run. Garvey is first time at bat, four to three. What excitement they've had here in this great city of Cleveland. Popped up, Burleson says, I'll take it. Arm is coming in, but the rooster makes the play. There are two outs. Harry Carter, he didn't know it was gone. <laughs> He's trying to beat out a long double, maybe a triple. I don't know if that is effort of glee. He's going to see it going out pretty soon. He was rooting and running and falling at the same time. I tell you something, these ball players, they just do not run on batteries. The excitement was there, and Carter just tricked, tripped and fell. Guerrero's in the on-deck circle. Boy, they're using all the ball players, and it's still a pretty close ball game, Tony. Pete Guerrero. Spent some time injured this year, but... He looks like the center fielder that Tommy Lasorda has been looking for. He will remind you a little bit of Willie Mays with his actions defensively and at bat. His tremendous power to all fields, a good throwing arm, can run. Excellent prospect. It's his first All-Star game. Guerrero. Fastball misses. Davis leads all relief pitchers in the major leagues with 60 strikeouts. That's Places in fourth overall in the American League. He was greeted with the home run. Misses with another fastball, and it's two balls and no strikes. Two home runs by Carter, one by Parker, home run by Singleton. We're glad to have baseball back. I have to join that banner, I'll tell you. <laughs> There's Gary Carter. What a night he's had. You tell Spani how he did it? I came down the elevator with him. I tell you, you see him in the hotel lobby, it'd be tough to pick him out as a ball player. He looked like he just walked off Madison Avenue. Three-piece suit, dark glasses, briefcase. Foul ball out of play. Ron Davis, who has had an amazing strikeout record this year. I think the irony of that is it was Stan Williams, the former Yankee pitching coach, who told him to change his grip from a sinking fastball style and go cross seam and ride the fastball and became more successful and then Williams just fired. He just blew it right by him. That ends the inning. So we go into the bottom half of the seventh inning, the American League four and the National League three. And what a ball game this is turning out to be here in Cleveland. It'll be Winfield, Burleson, and Evans.
Joke Aaron Joel and Tony Kubek here in Cleveland as we take a look at the city at night. And right in the center, Municipal Stadium, where quite a ball game is going on. Right now, the American League leading 4-3, bottom of the seventh, and a new pitcher on the mound for the National League, Vita Blue of the San Francisco Giants, and Bruce Benedict, the catcher. New battery, Winfield does it get in the strike one. There you see Benedict. Blue has been here before. Started for the American League. He's also started for the National League. Winfield 0 for 2. Bounced out, walked, and fly to center field. Doesn't get it. As you see, he can still be very overpowering over a short stretch. I tell you, I don't know if it's the glove or the speed, but you can hear that ball just pop into the glove of Benedict. It's always a great sound for the pitcher, and the batter hates it. And there goes Carter, who so far has to be the star of this ballgame. Excellent young catcher, Bruce Benedict. He's got a good bat. He's hitting this year for Bobby Cox, Atlanta Braves. Right up blue. A lot of first-timers in this All-Star game. Both teams. Four runs, 11 hits, and no errors for the American League. Three runs, six hits, and no errors for the National League. Two strike pitch. Look, Look out. out. Blue so far is not going in any cute stuff. He has just thrown fastball after fastball to infield. Let's pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is WMAQ-TV, Chicago. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kupak here in Cleveland. American League leading 4-3. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Vita Blue with the count of strike two on Dave Winfield. Pull foul! Vita Blue was the first pitcher ever to start all-star games for each league. 1971, Oakland. 1978, San Francisco. Named in 1971, 1975, 1978. And he started each year selected. So he had a little bit of a string broken. Outside, one ball, two strikes. Each manager sitting back in this close ball game, one with a guy named Bruce Souter in his bullpen, the other with a guy named Raleigh Fingers. Dallas Green and Bill Burton, there's Jimmy Fry. I bet Fry wishes he had the goose. Straight away center field, too high. Dawson has plenty of room. One out. Brings up Rick Burleson. Armas is batting in the uh, eighth spot in the changes. Frank White, who went in at the same time, is in the second spot, and the pitcher Davis is in the third spot. And Burleson, who's up there now, is in the fifth slot. A lot of controversy surrounding the shortstop selection of the American League. Some thought Burleson should make it. Some thought Young should be here. Some thought Trammell should be here off last year. Great Tiger shortstop. A lot of good young shortstops around, Joe. There are. Pull foul. And that's why I hope they never take it away from the fans, Tony. I mean, they vote and they argue. Well, I, we vote and we argue. That's what it's all about. I think really when Arch Ward started this, the Chicago area, his idea wasn't to make it a, a celebrity game, a fans game, a glamour event. Dream. It has been that way. So, and there will always be arguments as to whom should be here and who should not. You're always going to leave some great players off. Always going to be some inequities. But tonight, it's been a pretty good game. With excellent coverage by our producer, Mike Wiseman, and our director, Harry Coyle, who, I guess, do you think he ever gets blasé about doing big events? <laughs> oh, Harry. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. One ball, two strikes. He just put that clip on, tie on, and do it very way. <laughs> Got the first one he ever owned. <laughs> Mike Schmidt can't get it. The throw. He throws it away. Burleson, though, will not be able to advance. A little bit of a 
funny hop for Mike Schmidt. And then to show you how the adrenaline's pumping, even for a smooth fielder like Mike Schmidt, a veteran, he still almost threw it away and allowed an extra base. You can see the in-between hop once again waiting back on the ball. Some people call them bad artificial fielding habits. You learn to wait on the ball. When you get on dirt and grass, it'll cause you some problems. You gotta play the hop a little bit more when you play on dirt and grass, because the ball does not bounce true. So it's an error on Mike Schmidt. And listen to this. In 1935, here at Municipal Stadium, in an all-star game, they drew 69,831, which has been the record. And I'm going to give you the record in a minute. Foul ball out of play. Tonight, 72,086. It's a new record for an all-star game. And last night, they had over 70,000 at a football game. Tell me that this city is not alive. They've done a magnificent Madness. job after the postponements to get this field in shape and to get the city enthused. Foul ball out of play. Yes, sir. A lot of people get a lot of credit, beginning with the ground crew. There is a lucky, happy fan, a Yankee fan at that. But Marshall Fawcett and his ground crew, yeoman work to get ready here. You know, Gabe Paul, who's now the president of this ball club, has said that Cleveland is a sleeping giant. We get a good team, which he's put together. They were competitive in the first half. He said, you will really see something, and he's proving it tonight. Credit also to Phil Segi, general manager of the ball club, and they've done a marvelous job. Benedict behind that plate, he can throw. It gets away from him, all the way back. Burleson rounding second, the Roosters aggressive. Look at that. with a good throwing arm. He paused just a bit before he saw Burleson going, and here he is. There is no one who competes harder in this game, and he is not gifted with a whole lot of ability, Rick Burleson. Benedict has thrown out more base dealers than any other National League catcher, so that tells you he can throw, but the Rooster challenged him, and he won, and now the infield has come in. American League leading 4-3. to three. Burleson at third, and it's fouled off. The tribute they pay to Burleson is that they say he's even tempered. He comes to the ballpark mad and stays that way. <laughs> and he plays hard. You're an old timer, you say he comes from the old school. Evans has been good with men on base this year. In fact, since the middle of last year. Popped up. Ozzie Smith chasing it hard. Burleson is not tagging up. Dawson runs him off, wisely so. And Burleson has to haul. Now the local, Bo Diaz, the batter. He's never hit like this, though. Strike one. As you listen and watch this game, you have to, I'm sure, feel like I do with this crowd reaction. They are just cheering at the right time, booing at the right time. It looks like a pretty good baseball season coming up. appears to have a pretty good fastball, but when Blue's fastball is most lively, it's usually down low in the strike zone, which is unlike a lot of power pitchers. Usually their ball moves better up high in the strike zone, and he is high today. 
Diaz, 385 against left-handed pitching. Off the handle, he just got jammed. He fought it off. His first All-Star game in front of the hometown folks. Four to three is the score. American League out in front. Two men out. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Burleson is on at first, at third. It was safe on an air and went all the way to third on a wild pitch. Fouls it off. He's somehow staying live on good pitches. There's Burleson at third. You know, the commissioner's office had 80 dozen baseballs ready for the specially imprinted autographed all-star baseballs for this game. And before the game, they were having trouble finding about 40 dozen. <laughs> Couldn't find out who walked off with them. Those baseballs have turned into suits, shoes, and everything. He got him. Bo Diaz is out on strikes. That ends the inning. They threatened when Schmidt made this error. But you know, when an infielder misses the ball, there's an outfielder there. But when an outfielder misses it, it can get pretty exciting. World, a baseball owner in Cleveland's very own, Mr. Bob Hope. <laughs> I don't need to say who you're rooting for. You know it. You know it. I want to see him win. And in this park, I want to see him win. One serious question, as one who knows and understands and has been around the entertainment industry, understands the entertainment industry's relationship with the public, how do you think the public will deal with this industry as the season progresses? Oh, they can't miss. They can't miss. This has been the national pastime for so long. And look at this crowd. You know, this is it. And they'll come back. And they've uh, they've gone to other things for maybe something that's important, you know, reading and stuff. But they'll come back because this is in their heart. They were born with this. Bob, thank you. You look terrific. Thank you, Brian. Good and Joe, you. indeed, it does seem like the strike's ancient history. I tell you, it's the quickest makeup in history. Raleigh Fingers is the new pitcher. He's going against Ozzy Smith. Fingers, second in the American League with 12 saves. He's had eight saves in his last 11 appearances 36 strikeouts and 40 innings pitch he's been hot i don't know who the first relief pitcher to the hall of fame is but fingers sure got a chance is there one in now a relief pitcher will Helm, he's not in no i'd have to think about that yeah, i would too but boy this guy's over the long haul there's been nobody better year in and year out Oakland to san diego now the brewers Smith can steal a base for you. He can run. Smith draws the base on balls. It's four to three the score here. American League out in front. And Mike Eastler will be batting for the first time in this game before the hometown folks. Jimmy Fry, the American League, has used every one of his regular players. He still has pitchers left. Dallas Green still has Bill Madlock, Phil Garner, Bill Buckner, Tim Raines. It's a strike. Ozzie Smith at first base has stolen 125 bases over the last three seasons, and they're trailing by a run. You know they're looking for him to run. He's got a good lead at first. Eastler takes it low. One ball, one strike. a big jump. Good ball to handle. Oh, thrown into center field. And now Smith's going to try for third. They got him hung up. Buddy Bell to Burleson. And now Fingers has to cover. And Smith falls and it's all over. Everybody's down. That was the most graceful play of the evening on a lot of people's parts. And Ozzie Smith probably should have stopped right with Does Diaz he hit the umpire. No, it just pops out. Then practice is playing spring training some catchers. You throw it in the center field to set it up. <laughs> All right. This will give you an idea of the things that go unnoticed with a Dave Winfield. See how far he came in playing deep on Eastler to back up the play and fingers backed up the play properly to tag out Smith. And there goes a half gainer by Raleigh Fingers. The play goes two, eight, five. Six is Smith decides he's going to make it to third and says, uh-oh, got to make a U-turn, but it's too late. 
now it's Bell chasing him, and now it's Burleson and Fingers is there. And keep in mind, the way you make this play, only one man should handle that ball. Well, Winfield made the play on my part by coming in as quickly as he did, showing the great throwing arm and the alertness. He prevented that runner from going to third. Very alert play by Dave Winfield. Outside. You know, Winfield in his senior year at the University of Minnesota was a pitcher. He was 13 wins and one loss. He has a great throwing arm. 3-1 pitch. Had a good cut at it. That was some play. <laughs> Smith does come up with something. He gets a stolen base on that. There is the mayor of Cleveland with his wife, Mayor George Voinovich. We saw him last night, and he should be a proud man tonight with this reaction. He's had a, well, he referred to this as a historic weekend, and that certainly has proven to be. See now, you got Eastler on, and you do have Tim Raines sitting on the bench, who is capable of pinch running. A great speechster from the Montreal Expos, but apparently Dallas Green will not use him now. That play on Smith, if he was scoring, went eight, five, six and one with fingers getting the put out and in the final analysis you got to call that a bad base running play by Smith because he is the tying run at second base with nobody out Winfield made it a bad base running play with that arm and that alertness I think Ozzie Smith is still at the water cooler Bill Buckner is standing right in front of him but Ozzie trying to wipe himself off he looks like he fell off the truck, doesn't he? Straight away center field. Winfield is going back, back, way back. He'll not get this one. strike one. Schmidt gets a chance to extend the arms. That ball is inside and yet Schmidt having backed off the plate. We saw him last year take an inside low pitch and hit the right center field. Something he never did before. He gets his arms extended even on an inside pitch now. You talk about redeemers after a little rough time he's had down at third base. Well he has given That's the one. National League the lead. It's five to four here in the eighth inning. Doesn't get it. I tell you, the National League has created a great tradition in their dominance in 17 of the last 18. And a lot of that dominance started in the era of Willie Mays and Hank Aaron and Clemente and Frank Robinson. Just been a carryover now in the attitude of the National League team. They come in so confident. Two balls and two strikes. Mike Schmidt has averaged one home run every 15.06 times at bat in his eight-year career. Shouldn't forget to mention those pitching staffs with the Kofaxes and Drysdale and Gibson. Low. Diaz is taking a beating back there. His fingers is bouncing sinkers up there. Five to four. National League has just taken the lead. Two home runs by Carter. A home run by Parker. A home run by Schmidt. Singleton, a home run for the American League. It was fouled off. While I got a chance here, earlier we gave you an address if you wanted the All-Star Souvenir Program. You send $4, and if you're from Canada, it's $4.50. Be sure to include your name and address. There is the address, All-Star Program, Post Office Box 243, Burleson. Long throw, not in time. A base hit for Dusty Baker. He had a chance to see one of the best throwing arms around among shortstops by Burley. There's the play by Burleson. So he's in the outfield. Way out there.
just out of the reach of Bell. Not hit that well. Burleson had to go a long ways. Eight, ten steps. Writes himself with a strong throw, but just not in time. So that address once again, all-star program, post office box, 243 Norwood, New Jersey, 07648. That's $4, and in Canada, $4.50. Be sure to include your name and address. Well, Baker is going to leave the game, and you're going to see Mr. Excitement of this season come in. Tim Raines, who was on route, was right on track to break Blue Brock's record before the strike. So Baker trots off. And Raines, he is stretching those legs down at first base. The four home runs for the National League ties a record for one club in an all-star game. Tim Raines in 1981, 50 stolen bases and 56 attempts after 54 games. And it is sheer speed. Lou Brock in 1974 had 38 stolen bases after 40 attempts. High tie fastball, ball one. Scouts say that Raines just simply outruns the ball. first baseman Murray oh. and he's ready to go to third but he stops at second it'll be an error on fingers you know you almost get the feeling after the dominance by the National League 17 of the last 18 ball games they've won that the American League when the reserves come in and the reserves have been a big part for the National League the American League's looking for things to happen and they are Reigns draws the throw from fingers gets away from Murray he's in scoring position Tony, he took two quick looks, too, to see if he'd go to third. Murray was behind the runner, never did get a glove close to it. Charlie Metro, the Dodgers scout, has kept that stopwatch on a lot of base dealers in this time. He said there's never been a man that he can recall that he has time to get from first base to second as fast as Reigns. He's including Wills and Brock and Morgan and Sinead. Go on and on. Dave Steve comes out to the Toronto Blue Jays. So, a shot of Cleveland, Ohio. And you see Municipal Stadium, the site of tonight's game, Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek. And what a ball game we're seeing. All kinds of home runs. Four by the National League, one by the American League. And we've got a new pitcher in there for the American League, Dave Steve from the Toronto Blue Jays. He'll be going against Andre Dawson with Tim Raines, a pinch runner, on at second base. There's one man out. Five to four is the score. National League out in front. Frank White checking with the pitcher well he's going to make sure that Steve a, a fairly young pitcher although he's been an all-star competition before keeps a little bit of an eye on Tim Raines because he will still third base Steve is a tough pitcher to catch his ball moves a lot now you see Raines Fouled off, strike one. Dawson had a base hit in the second inning, bounced out in the fourth, and he struck out in the sixth. Broke his bat. Dick Williams, the manager of Tim Raines, is on coaching at third base, and we'll be seeing the Montreal Expos and the Cardinals next Saturday as we go back to our NBC Game of the Week schedule. We'll be in Montreal. You know, this is an especial thrill for Dave Steve. He's, had a, he's having a pretty good week. There you see our games, Royals versus... Cardinals or the Indians versus well, I got that wrong. They... If the Royals well, Indians the... Cardinals Expo I'm thinking of the championship series. Right? You're thinking of an all Missouri series <laughs> Tony <laughs> hometown <laughs> St. Louis. It's hard to say Kansas about City. Steve. He's having a pretty good week because he's getting married on Friday his fiance Patty's here in the stand. Tune in Saturday. A couple good ball games for you. Nice play by Diaz Steve. Misses two balls, one strike. Steve, second all-star team. Good crowd on hand here. We hope that Mr. Burns, Britt Burns' dad, who's in a hospital, able to catch some of the all-star game. Britt thinking about him all night long. Tapped in front of the plate. Steve, his only play is at first base. There goes Reigns. There'll be no play. As soon as he started to throw the first, Reigns took off. 
They tell me Rain's sides were so sore and tore up from all the sliding before this strike. There you see Mary Alicia Watson and Arthur Watson, our number one man here in sports. President and uh, Chief Operating Officer Bob Mulholland was here earlier. He's gone. Sandy Hatton and the lady on the left is Louisa Kuhn, Commissioner's wife. Strike. Benedict takes a fastball. And Dave Steve is really keeping a wary eye out for Tim Rain down at third base, who's got a pretty good lead on that pitch. You see him jockeying off. Foul off. Two strikes, two outs, five to four. National League out in front. Home run by Mike Schmidt gave him the lead. Fastball misses. You know, it was in this ballpark last All-Star game when Shane Deans had to steal home, was out, and they claimed balk on Dean Stone. Yogi tagged him out, didn't he? He tagged him, but he wasn't out because they called him safe. So that ends the inning, five to four, and we're talking about home the, about home runs. I keep thinking about Reggie Jackson's home run off Doc Ellis in Detroit. Remember that one. Nobody enjoys watching Reggie Jackson hit more than Reggie Jackson. And there it goes. A tremendous home run by Reggie off the light standard in deep right field, high atop the roof in Detroit. The American League won that game. The highlight, that home run. Fielder, and there he is, Tim Raines. Raines in left field. And Bill Madlock is at third base. And the new pitcher is Nolan Ryan. Ryan batting fourth. Matlock is batting first. So aside from pitchers, Jimmy Fry, the American League, has no regulars left in case he needs a pinch hitter. And Bill Buckner, last year's National League batting champs, is left for Dallas Green. Tony Armas leads it off for the American League here in the bottom of the eighth. They trail by a run. 13 home runs, 41 runs batted in, hitting 289 for Billy Martin in the Oakland A's. High ball one. Nolan Ryan. A strikeout pitcher. Oh, you hear Grunt? Ball two. Oh, you can hear Grunt all the way up here with that effort. Possessor of four no hitters along with Sandy Koufax. He is average. Hall of Famer. He's averaged 9.56 strikeouts and 5.36 walks per nine innings in his career. Nolan Ryan. Fouled back. Two balls, one strike. He's had an exceptional year for the Astros. There are the all time strikeout leaders Johnson, Gaylord, Perry. Nolan Ryan third, Carlton and Seaver. Three men in this ball game. Curveball. Didn't get it. Two balls and two strikes. Five to four. National League out in front, bottom of the eighth. 72,086, a new all-star game attendance record here in Cleveland. He got him a high fastball. Armas is out on strikes, and Nolan Ryan, first batter, first strikeout. There are a lot of hitters that want no part of Nolan Ryan because it's conveniently wild and throws very hard. There is Dallas Green's ace in the hole. The split-fingered fastball. Some players have tried to mimic it. None as good as his. Bruce Suter. See, he's got a couple of wins and a save in all-star appearances. Boy, with that shot, he looks right out of a Charlton Heston movie, doesn't he? Beard. One of those Vikings. <laughs> Leif Erickson. <laughs> Which way to America? Buddy Bell, center field. 
Dawson is there, and there are two away. Here is Eddie Murray. He hit a ball pretty hard that was hit at Garvey that Ozzie Smith turned out in the force that which turned out to be a big play I think in this ball game could have been a lot of trouble for the National League. There's a Smith strike. hadn't gotten that force out. Defense too often goes overlooked. Garvey at first base right now really guarding the line. Outside. I want to get that all-star play right that I talked about, Tony, because I know DeRoche is listening. He'll argue with me. Uh-huh. Shane Deans thought he had scored. But they called him out, and Dean Stone, DeRocher thought, had balked. Right. Yogi tagged him out. Yeah. And it all ended up that he was out. You bet. You know, I was thinking of not, there's Jimmy Fry again, who, again, uh, not taking anything away from the American League pitching staff as we look at Frank White, but he would love to have the goose. Oh. As Dallas Green has Suter. <laughs> Bouncing ball to Trio. That grunt you hear is Nolan Ryan. Uh. So it's three up and three down. We complete eight innings of play here. The score, National League five, the American League four. I hope you're, uh, I hope you're aware and I hope you're awake a little bit and can hear what I have to say. I just want to tell you I love you, pal. I miss you. I wish you were here, and I'm praying for you. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. You keep hanging in there, partner, and I love you. Burns. The doctor said that they would take a television set and turn the volume up and hope that a message from Britt might be a form of therapy, that he might respond. And Britt, of course, is very hopeful, and we're sending out a prayer to Pops and the family. I think all of baseball would join you, Tony, all the fans, as Bill Buckner is up there now as a pinch hitter. Buckner from the Chicago Cubs. Batting for a trio. Murray has it. Steve covers. He's one away. So now Dallas Green is left with Phil Garner on his bench. Britt there Burns. is Britt Burns at the bullpen with Denny Summers. Denny Summers, a coach Cleveland. Line drive, left field. It is a fair ball. Armas cuts it off. Here's the throw. It's off target, and Garvey has himself a double. Armas has a great throwing arm, but he's used to throwing from right field. Playing in left field is strange to him. He's one of the players. Well, I guess some rank it the best outfield in baseball. You can get a lot of arguments. Murphy and Henderson and Armas. Throw it a little high to Frank White. Garvey hustles out a double. So it brings up Bill Madlock for the first time in this game. Five to four. National League's out in front. We're in the top of the ninth. Bouncing ball, Burleson, big hops, going to go to first base in time. Taking third is Garvey. Brings up Ozzy Smith, the shortstop. Ozzy walked his last time up, and that's when you saw that play when he tried to steal. Well, he, he was successful in a steal. The throw went into center field. And Winfield threw it to Bell, and Bell gave it to Burleson. Burleson said, here, Raleigh Fingers, you take it. And they finally tagged him out. We've seen some errors in this ballgame, but there have been a lot of runs saved by great defensive plays. Baker saved two with a dive and left. Winfield may have saved a run with his play getting Smith. Smith may have saved one or a couple by scooping out Garvey's throw. If there's one area I think that they've been rusty or look rusty, it's throwing. They've made bad throws. Catcher, that throw Armas yeah. just made. 
Yeah, and you got to you talk about Bell's play at third on the shot, getting right. Smith. Garvey Sinker, he threw to Ozzie Smith when he didn't make a great play. Carew made an exceptional play at first base early in the ball game, saving a double off Parker. Been generally a well-played game. The players look much sharper in this game than some people thought. But basically, it's been a game of home runs along with the defensive plays. And it's a 5-4 to four ball game with the National League out in front. Fouled off. Dusty Baker has a slightly pulled groin muscle. Made that great catch, and that's where he hurt his leg. And Tommy Lasorti just got up and had a drink. He also ran very hard down the first base, beating out a base hit. And then Tim Raines. There's Scott McGregor, possessor of maybe, maybe the best changeup in baseball. You can argue he's got a great fastball. They thought it was a strike. But Bill Hallis says, no, oh, uh-uh. One ball, two strikes. You guys proved it tonight. None better than Cleveland. None better than Cleveland. Put on a show. Looked like it was gone for a while. Still set the major league attendance record. Foul out of play. Well, they gave us T-shirts, Tony, that said, say something nice about Cleveland. We can wear that, and it'll be the truth. You don't have to work too hard to say something nice. Oh, you're just saying all this to get a day like hard to sell. Get out of here. <laughs> I said it on the Carson show before you thought about it. <laughs> Fastball misses. Two balls and two strikes. Three balls, two strikes. Three two pitch. Walk team. So, National League has Ozzie Smith at first. Steve Garvey is at third. And here is Mike Easler. He walked and scored. Smith, stolen base threat, although it, it, you might say it's unlikely with two out that Dallas Green would not want to take the bat out of Easler's hand. And Easler's story is a good one. We told you he's from Cleveland. Spent a dozen years in the minor leagues. His father is here today, and he thought his father would not be around because he had some very serious surgery over the spring of the year. And he's here watching his son in an all-star game. Eastler has not gone more than two games without a hit this season. Five runs, nine hits, one error for the National League. Four, 11, and one for the American League. Fastball misses, ball one. Smith, a good lead at first. Bouncing ball to Burleson. In time, the force is on. That ends the inning. And we go into the bottom of the ninth. It's National League 5, American League 4. We've had a lot of interesting plays in this ball game, And we're going to show you some of them. Green has put in his last regular. Bill Gardner has gone in to second base. Bruce Souter is the pitcher. And Frank White, the batter, fouls it off. Both managers have used all the regular players. With Souter coming in now to try and finish this game off the National League, the only pitcher left for Dallas Green is Carlton, lefty. For the American League, Britt Burns, Doug Corbin of the Twins, and Scott McGregor of the Orioles. Foul ball. And it's strike two. I think it's unusual because Dave Steeb is in the on-deck circle. You don't think he's going to bat? Who's he got? That's it. Dave Steeb spent a lot of years in the minor leagues. He broke in as an outfielder. 
the Toronto Blue Jays converted him. Now, unless I've missed something, Steve's got to hit for himself because there isn't anybody left. I'm looking at my scorecard and Looks I can't like a read bingo card. Uh, uh, Every regular's been used. I think really where the the crink came in in the armor of, if there is a word like that, of uh, what? crink in the armor <laughs> of Jimmy Fry. It's when Fred Lynn couldn't go out and play defense. And Armas had to come in earlier than he expected. Well, if Lynn got hurt or what happened? Full foul. Look out there. Well, Gary Carter in this game of home runs. I think he's got my vote. He had two, uh, two first pitch home runs. There's the trophy, which will be presented by the commissioner of baseball, Bui Q. I got to give it to Carter. He made a great throw. First inning as Madlock comes up with it. And there's one out. Dave Steve will bat for himself. 56 players were used in this game as we check it. And that's a new All-Star game record. So most players used. And biggest crowd ever in an All-Star game. Well, you hate to say it, but Jimmy Fry has put himself in an embarrassing position. Down by one, having to let his pitcher hit. But Steve has swung a bat before in the minor leagues, but with the DH in the American League, he hasn't since he's been in the major leagues. And that's what the boos are for. There's nobody left, and that is because of not the crink, but the chink in the armor. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Little first game. You're looking at another historical event. It's the first at bat in the major leagues for Dave Steve. Yeah. Five to four is the score at the American League who have not won an All-Star game since 1971 are two outs away from losing this one. The dominance of the National League will continue. Maybe you still got to get by Winfield. Still got to get by Winfield. Listen to the crowd. Well, Jimmy Fry has got to be a little embarrassed, but it really isn't all his fault. I think because of Freddie Lynn having to leave the game. For what reason, we haven't gotten a report. But he still gets his cleanup hitter up to face Suter with that split-fingered fastball. Guy Suter throws what I think it, it, it may be a pitch that embarrasses more hitters than even a knuckleball. I mean, that thing starts chest high and it bounces in the dirt and you swing at it. Taught to him by the late Freddie Martin, his minor league pitching coach. Saved his career. Winfield is 0 for 3, 0 for 4. 0 for 3, make it. Bruce Souter was the winning pitcher in the 1978, 1979 All-Star game. He earned a save last season. Chance for a save here. 5-4. Winfield doesn't get it. Chances are pretty good that Souter will throw him nothing, nothing to hit that will not be a split-fingered fastball. You've heard of the fork ball. A little bit different grip, a little bit harder. With tremendous downward action on it. One ball, two balls, one strike, two outs. Five to four, bottom of the ninth. Bruce Souter. American League needs a big one right here to break the dominance. Doesn't get it. What do you think he's going to throw now? Uh -huh. Here comes Uncle Charlie. Be ready. He's going to wrap this up with a blue ribbon and throw that split-fingered fastball. He's going for the strikeout. it off you can see Winfield he really cut his swing down just trying to get a piece of it that wasn't the home run swing folks just trying to put the ball in playoff suitor hey Bruce Benedict the catcher from Atlanta is used to catching trick pitchers he's got Nico that knuckleball Perry with those strange pitches he throws so he's used to balls moving funny <laughs> two balls two strikes two outs five four National League leading Bottom of the ninth. Take a look at it, he says. Take a look at it. That ball really dipped. Ball three. Three and two. Bill Haller takes a good look at it, says it's all right. Well, it's down to the final pitch. Maybe. 
the two richest people, I guess, in baseball. Winfield and Suter. You're looking at millionaire against millionaire. Giants of the industry. Remains full three and two. He went split finger fastball. And there's the owner of the Yankees, Mr. George Steinbrenner, looking at his franchise, Dave Winfield, in a batter's box. Bruce Suter, Cardinals. We'll have the Cardinals in Montreal next Saturday. Pitcher is Vita Blue. He ties Lefty Gomez with three All-Star Game wins. It's a record, a save for Suter. The loser is Raleigh Fingers. The game-winning RBI was by Mike Schmidt. Gary Carter had two home runs. Parker had a home run. Singleton gave the American League an early lead in the second with a home run, but it was not to be, Tony. It was not to be. It looks like Gary Carter is the most valuable player because they're going over there to the first base side. Brian Gumbel is down there, and let's go to Brian Gumbel, who's with the commissioner and Gary Carter. Okay, Joe, Tony, you hit it on the head. Number eight of the Montreal Expos. Let me get around here, will you? Forget? Right. Number eight of the Montreal Expos with two home runs, the most valuable player in the 52nd All-Star Game. Commissioner, I'll let you do the honor. Gary Carter, you earned it. Thank you. Great performance by you. Everybody's proud of you. We're all proud of you. And I want to present you the commissioner's trophy, emblematic of being the most valuable player in the All-Star. Thank you very, very much. I, it's just a, a great pleasure to be back playing baseball again, and I'm just very much looking forward to this second half, and this will be a great start for that second half. Thank you. And I'd like to just thank the good Lord for being here and uh, and just, you know, giving me the ability to play, and, uh, boy, this is a top off a, a great highlight right here. You're making a habit of this kind of thing. Last year, a great tag at the plate on the throw from Parker. This year, the two home runs. Um, special significance to you? Well, Brian, this is a, a psych job right here. You know, the, the All-Star game is a big thrill, and I'm just very, very proud to have uh, represented the National League and also the Montreal Expos. We were all very surprised at the quality of play. Were you equally surprised? Yeah, I was a little bit because uh, I know when we left spring training, I was a, uh, my timing was a bit off. Uh, we, we had two exhibition games against the Boston Red Sox, one in Fenway and then one at home, and uh, I still didn't feel 100%, but boy, tonight, when you, when you get that heart pounding and you play against the fellas, I tell you, it's a lot of fun. Gary, congratulations. Congratulations, Commissioner. Thank you. Joe and Tony, some things never change. Strike or no strike, National League wins again. <laughs> All right. Okay, Gary, Carter is Gary Carter is the most valuable player. And, Tony, what was your reaction to this game as far as the crowd? We talked about it in the opening. I think the romance is on again. Well, I think it is, too. I think that first step in regaining its popularity has begun tonight with the National League coming back once again. They've won 18 of their last 19. Two names pop my mind and that may not even be here today. Ray Greeby and Marvin Miller, who are probably sitting after a very bitter struggle of almost two months, smiling. They did their jobs hard. They did them well. But they had a pretty good show tonight. They had. The baseball is back. And tonight in the All-Star Game, National League 5, American 4. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek saying so long from Municipal Stadium. The 1981 All-Star Game has been brought to you by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. And by General Electric. At GE, we bring good things to life. By Ford and your Ford dealer, who invites you to test drive the EXP, America's new personal sports group. And by Gillette, makers of Right Guard Solid. Solid odor and wetness protection for a man. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Oldmeyer. The coordinating producer of NBC's baseball and tonight's producer is Michael Weissman. Directed by Harry Coyle. Pre-game produced by David Stern. Pre-game directed by John Gonzalez. Technical director, Bill Toby. Associate directors, John J. Filippelli and Mary Buda. Associate producers, Michael Hadley and David Neal. This meeting is called to decide which one of us is the most popular light beer drinker of all. You must be talking about me. I vote for my buddy, Boog Powell. Oh. Should I take the minutes? You can take all year. Hey, I cast my vote for Billy Martin. I'll second that. Me too. Excuse me, this chart clearly shows what a little showing off can do. Now, wait a 
minute. I'm the most popular guy here. We a little respect. At least we agree that light beer for Miller tastes great. Let's Let's go. Go. Tastes great. Let's go. Making a secret ballot. Could we vote for Red Auerbach? Please. Please. What? I'm voting for me. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Count the vote, <laughs> and that's no joke. All right. Gentlemen, we have a winner. Says here the winner is Bubba Smith. I knew this was a bad idea. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Anticipation is the watchword for tonight's celebration of the national pastime. As game time approaches in Cleveland Municipal Stadium, the excitement mounts, and players and fans alike are thrilled that Major League Baseball is back. The pregame ceremonies are equal to the glamour of the event. The celebrated ball is safely delivered the world's largest American flag is unfurled, and the biggest crowd in all-star history looks on. Cameras click, and both teams are ready for the midsummer spectacle. So are entertainer Bob Hope and Vice President George Bush. Dallas Green's National Leaguers have the confidence of a team that has won nine in a row. But like Green, 14 of his players will be making their all-star debut. The American Leaguers have lost 17 of their last 18, and it's been suggested that the team is jinxed or hexed, but there's no time for speculation. The game is about to begin. A record crowd of more than 72,000 is on hand to greet the stars, like Hall of Famer Warren Spahn, the National League's honorary captain. The biggest cheers are for Cleveland stars, like another Hall of Famer, Bob Feller, captain of Jim Fry's American League. And there's more cheers reserved for Vice President Bush, ready to throw out the first ball, an all-star tradition. Tonight's catcher is 13-year-old Derek Williams, chosen at random as a representative fan. The vice president, a former Yale first baseman, lets fly, and Municipal Stadium's fourth green game becomes real. Leading off is Philadelphia's 40-year-old Pete Rose, an all-star for the 15th time, and one of baseball's greats of all time, a ball player extraordinaire. 18 years in the majors for a man who always goes all out. Rose began with Cincinnati in 1963 and was Rookie of the Year. Batting titles followed in 68, 69, and 73. And defensively, the versatile Rose had the highest lifetime fielding percentage of any outfielder ever. But history may remember Rose best for his hustle at home to win the 1970 All-Star Game. Now, another All-Star Game, 1981. First baseman, Pete Rose. For Rose, a record fifth starting position in all-star play. Detroit's Jack Morris is on the mound, and 58 days after the last big league swing of the bat, Pete Rose swings true. A leadoff hit for the man whose previous hit during the regular season tied Stan Musial's all-time National League record. But in the top of the first, Rose was stranded. In the bottom of the first, 20-year-old rookie Fernando Valenzuela of the Los Angeles Dodgers starts for the National League. Leading off is the California Angels' Rod Carew, who, like Pete Rose, plays first base. And he's been here before, too. Rod Carew in 1967 was the American League's Rookie of the Year with the Minnesota Twins. He made the all-star team that season and every year since, running up a total of 15 in a row. A multi-talented performer, Peru is always a threat on the bases.
His seven batting crowns are surpassed by only Ty Cobb and Hannes Wagner. And his 332 lifetime average is the highest among all active players. Rod Carew is a fan favorite with a record 27 million all-star vote since the balloting began in 1970. Leading off, first baseman Rod Carew. Quite an ovation for the American League first baseman, batting first. Rod Carew's sixth base hit in his last eight all-star at-bats. Quite a percentage. But the law of averages catches up on the bases, and at the end of one full inning, it's the National League nothing, the American League nothing. With the game still scoreless in the bottom of the second inning, another distinguished all-star makes an appearance. Pitcher Tom Seaver. Cincinnati's Tom Seaver, who earlier in the season recorded his 3,000th strikeout, is now ready for his eighth All-Star game, which ties a record for pitchers. And his first challenge is against Baltimore slugging switch hitter Ken Singleton, a power hitter against a power pitcher, a classic duel. And Seaver gets two quick strikes. Come on, Kenny, rip it down. The count is nothing in two. The American League strikes first, and it's a one to nothing ball game. Singleton's home run is the 113th in all-star history, and the jubilant Cleveland crowd seems to sense that this might be the American League's year. In each of the three previous years, the American League couldn't hold an early lead. But tonight could be different. Third inning, and standing tall on the mound, Cleveland's very own Len Barker, the overwhelming fan favorite. The enthusiastic hometown support of Len Barker is matched by his impeccable performance over the next two innings. faces only six batters, and his performance is perfect, reminiscent of his perfect game three months earlier on the same field. The highlight of Parker's performance was his duel with slugger Dave Parker in the third. One bad pitch could have tied it. But no, nothing in one. Now it's no balls and two strikes. After wasting a pitch, it's one and two. Still a pitcher's count. But Barker just misses. The fourth straight pitch at or below the knee. And now, for the count two and two, the challenge. The American League strikeout leader has done it, and done it in style. And his team still hangs on to its one-run advantage. Top of the fifth inning, still one nothing, and California's Ken Forsh is the new pitcher. Batting for the National League is Montreal Expo catcher Gary Carter. Carter is facing one of the game's best control pitchers, but on this particular pitch, it's Carter in control. The score is tied one to one, and National League fans get their chance to cheer.
in the dugout, Carter's teammates offer their own spirited congratulations. It stays tied in the bottom of the fifth, and then in the sixth inning, Mike Norris comes on for the American League. Fielder Dave Parker. Dave Parker bats for the first time since the Len Barker strikeout, and the Cobra is coiled. In a game of inches, Parker's roller hits the edge of the grass, and Buddy Bell's gold glove is rendered helpless. Double jeopardy. For Dave Parker, opportunity knocks twice, and this time he answers the call with a vicious drive. Long distance. Parker's home run is especially memorable since coming on the heels of such a strange foul ball. The American League appears snake bit as the National League now leads two to one. The Dodgers' Burt Hooten, who retired three in a row in the fifth, is now the pitcher of record, and he faces Ken Singleton. For the fourth time in six innings, the American League leads off with a hit or a walk. Red Sox slugger Dwight Evans having his best season is next, and Hooten must now work from the stretch for the first time. Evans' base hit puts the potential tying run in scoring position, and there's nobody out. Carlton Fisk. Chicago's Carlton Fisk is hitless in two tries and has only one hit and 13 all-star bats. But this time he loops one to load him up. Trailing by only one run and nobody out. The American League is urged on by this huge Cleveland crowd to break the spell. California's Fred Lynn is sent up to hit, and the stage is set. Second baseman Manny Trio saves a run, but it's the American League's fourth hit in a row, and the game is tied 2-2. And the former Indian is well remembered by the Cleveland fans. Swim it, buddy! Swim it! Swim it! No outs. The bases are loaded, and it's a critical moment. The American League for nine years has hoped for the big inning that could break up the ball game, and now is that chance. With the count full, Bell hits what appears to be a certain double playground, but a second look reveals that the ball bounced off Buddy's foot making it a foul ball. Just like with Parker in the top of the inning, the matter of an inch or two makes all the difference. Only this time, the American League has gotten the break. Base is loaded, no outs, full count, 2-2 ball game, and Buddy Bell has another chance. Get out of here! A sacrifice fly, and the American League regains the lead, 3-2. Now there's one away, and Baltimore's Eddie Murray is the pinch hitter. Murray's grounder also looked like a double play, but a low throw, and thanks to Ozzie Smith, the National League was lucky to get one. Former National Leaguer Ted Simmons, now with the Brewers, steps up with two out and runners at the corner. hit 
and the American League now leads four to two. Five hits crowded into one inning brings Dallas Green out. All right, Big and that's enough. You've got 37 pitches. That's enough for you. But all right, pitch like hell. All right. The Phillies, Dick Ruthven is next. Hello. Hi, Rufus. We have uh, two outs. Yes. We have men on first and second, and we will want to get out of this. You have Mr. Oliver hitting. Oh my God. Let's go get it. Okay. Ruthven and Carter know the score and they want no more. The American League leads four to two. Ted Simmons at first base, Eddie Murray at second, and the dangerous Mr. Al Oliver at the plate. A pop-up to deep short. Looks like trouble. Ozzy Smith goes back, but out of nowhere comes Dusty Baker to make the play. Running full tilt all the way, Dusty Baker comes from left field for a spectacular inning-ending catch. And with two potential insurance runs circling the bases, Baker's heroics keep the National League alive. The National League has been rejuvenated by Baker's catch. And with three innings yet to go, there's still time to catch up. Batting seven. Catcher Gary Carter. Gary Carter, who homered on the first pitch of the fifth inning, now eagerly awaits the first pitch of the seventh. Strikeout artist Ron Davis of the Yankees gets the call. Dave Winfield gets to the wall, but not the ball. And all of a sudden, the National League trails by only one. In his last two at-bats, Carter has seen two pitches, and both times he really liked what he saw. The Expo catcher becomes only the fifth player in All-Star history to homer twice in the same game. And coming only one pitch after Baker's diving catch, Carter's homer also demonstrates the game of inches. The ball was just beyond the reach of Dave Winfield's valiant try, but had it fallen one inch shy, it would have stayed in play. But now it's a one-run game. In the eighth, Milwaukee's Raleigh Fingers comes in to do what he does best. At age 34, number 34 has saved more games than anyone in baseball history. But in this game, Raleigh lets his fingers do the walking. And with one away, Pittsburgh's Mike Easler becomes the tying run. Jim Fry is only five outs away from victory. But up steps the premier home run hitter in the major leagues, Mike Schmidt. Going, going, and it is gone. And so is the American League lead. The National League is on top five to four. For the fourth inning in a row, the senior circuit has hit for the circuit, an all-star record. Schmidt's blast traveled more than 400 feet, and the National League's leading boat getter on this year's ballot is accepted at home by his very own national convention. Nice gone. Nice, nice gone. It's the bottom of the ninth inning, and the National League's 5-4 to four comeback lead is entrusted to the St. Louis Cardinals' Bruce Souter. Souter won the 78 and 79 All-Star Games and then settled for save in 1980. Now, a chance for another save, as Souter, who works from the stretch regardless, looks in at leadoff man Frank White of the Royals. Guarding the line is Pittsburgh's Bill Madlock, who turns a third base grounder into a first base out. One away. Pitcher Dave Steve of Toronto must now bat for himself as the American League has used all its pinch hitters. 
Steve, who has batted only once in the major leagues, gets his second chance here and becomes out number two. Center fielder Dave Winfield. This is it. A whole game full of opportunities has diminished into one final chance. And Dave Winfield is the last hope. The count is full. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The bottom of the ninth, and the American League's down by one. The ball game is over, and for the 10th straight year, the National League has won, this time 5-4. to four. Most of tonight's record crowd is disappointed with the outcome, and after a look at the American League's recent All-Star history and a few of the strange bounces in this game, you can't help but wonder. But winner or loser, jinxes or not, the fans agree that the game was hard-fought and exciting, and it's good to have Major League Baseball once again.